Okay. Yes, we are live. Hello, guys. Good afternoon. You are all specially welcome to today's live conversation. I don't know if you all can notice that I am just super excited. I'm trying so hard to control myself because I can see Papa Ghosts um, on the back end right now. And oh my God. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm just trying to control myself. But guys, um, this has been the most anticipated um, live conversation ever for me. Yes. Ever since I started, um, you know, reviewing um, the Big Brother show. This is this has just been one conversation. I've just been looking forward to having, you know, with this incredible fascinating individual and i'm super excited that it's finally happening today oh my god i didn't know i was muted on on twitter guys apologies about that but anyways you're all specially welcome to today's live conversation i hope you all are well and i just want to quickly apologize first that um today being the work day for probably most of you in south africa um we're doing this by 3 p.m i know we should have had it you know towards the evening time you know just for the sake of those who are returning from work but guys i don't know we just had to work with the time that was available so my sincere apologies for that all right but don't worry it's currently being recorded on youtube and on twitter so if you're not here right now don't worry you are not missing out on anything because it's going to be available on these two platforms um for you to catch up with all right and um today's conversation is going to be very robust very robust of course you know that the the person we're going to be speaking with is a very intelligent and intellectually minded person and so i'm super excited about this conversation all right so once again wherever you're listening from or watching us from you're all specially welcome my name is gloria elijah this is frankly speaking with gloria elijah and i am the girl with the tea and right now as i'm about to bring onto the stage papa ghost please when i want to put your hands together or maybe give him a stand innovation or whatever i want to do just do it or probably just and maybe just carry a cup of tea or coffee <laughs> and chill because this conversation is about to be mad all right okay hello papa ghost <laughs> <laughs> glory i cannot hear you is it is it the, is the problem on my end oh my god but i, I can actually hear you i can hear I you, hear you. I've, I've been watching you for the past two minutes and i haven't heard a word you said Oh my God. Okay, so um, are you joining from your laptop or your phone? Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, hold on a second. Let me type, let me check the comment section. Let me type this. Um, are you joining from your laptop? or phone yeah i sent you a message on the chats can you check the chats okay maybe should i leave and re-enter because i don't okay, know leave, I, I, yeah leave and re-enter i hear you at all okay let me okay re-enter yeah yeah oh my god I think we had the same issue when um, we're going to have conversations with Doi from the Big Brother All-Star season. It was really hectic, but we sort of figured it out. So guys, don't worry. Don't go anywhere. Just chill. Just chill. All right. The, the, the party is about to begin. Don't go anywhere, all right? Just hold on. Um, but whilst we're waiting for Papa Ghost to join us, um, as usual, I just want to encourage everybody on here today to be open-minded, all right? Be open-minded and receptive, okay? And I believe that's the best way to enjoy, uh, to enjoy conversations with Gloria Elijah. You have to be open-minded and receptive, okay? Okay, he's back. Hi, Papa Ghost. Can you hear me I'm now? I'm still not hearing you. Um, I'm still not hearing you on my end. I have oh my no god idea what it could be ah uh, yeah ah uh, yeah sad about this <laughs> oh my god um yeah i cannot I, hear you I, I i cannot hear you okay um i'm thinking of what to no. do okay uh let me see uh, um guys just hold on we're gonna get this um can you hear then can you hear 
we can be what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um let's do let me let me send a DM if they can hear me. Um are you using a laptop or a phone? So so Papa goes, can you use another device to join? Can you join with another device, like another phone? Another phone. Oh, guys, you guys can actually, yeah, I can also hear him, but it's quite, I don't know. He said he can't hear me. So, okay, so Papa Ghost, I'm going to drop the link in the comments section. Okay, I can hear you. I can hear ah! you through my sister's phone, but. Um... <laughs> you can hear me now. Can you hear me now? Oh my god! Yeah, obviously there's a bit of a lag as well, but oh. I don't know what what can we do. What can we try and do to to? Okay, I'm listening, um, I'm listening to you through another phone, not my actual phone. Oh. What, what can we do? What okay. Um. Can you? Um, okay. So let me let's do this. Yeah. Can you join me from another device? Join me from another device. Okay. Join me from another device. Join me from another device. Um, so join from another okay. device. Yeah. Guys, my apologies. Do we have a minute? Yes. Can I run off? Yes. So join from yes. Device. No problem. No problem. Okay. Guys, my sincere apologies, all right? This conversation is very, very important. But um, don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be worth your while. I promise you. It's going to be worth your while, all right? He's currently trying to get another device and just basically, you know, to get the audio and video rolling. If we try all these things and <clears throat> the audio is still having a problem, he'll probably have to join with just, you know, his audio and not his video. But for those of you joining us now, you are especially welcome. Thank you all so much for making it a date with us. I am honored that today being the work day of the week, you guys still made, it, um, made our time to join us. So I'm super excited about this and I am grateful. Thank you all so much, all right? And I also want to especially thank Papa Ghost's team for making this conversation possible. Um, I told you all about how I get a bit hesitant sometimes, you know, to reach out to housemates and their team members because of past experience, you know, especially with the Big Brother Ninja ex housemate. But this time around, it's quite it's quite nice, you know. Um, so far, the housemates I've spoken with, their team members have just been, you know, incredible humans, and I am grateful for how warm they are, how warm they are, and open minded. So yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Um, Papa Ghost is back. I think he's still trying to set up with another device. Um, as you can see, with one device, we can see him clearly, but the audio is not that great. So we're trying to get it figured out so that we can start the conversation, all right? Yeah, so I actually have a lot of questions for Papa Ghost and I can't wait for him to, you know, answer to all of them. And guys, it's gonna be a great day. Don't worry, don't worry. But in the meantime, um, today is actually a public holiday in Nigeria. I think today and tomorrow, yes. I even saw some news that Thursday was added. I say, ha, Nigerians in this harsh economy, we're actually enjoying a lot of holidays. <laughs> but anyways, um, to be honest, I don't really know what this holiday is about, but if you're one of those people benefiting from the holidays, um, happy holidays to you in Nigeria. Okay. All right. So, Papa Ghost, you're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, he's sort of hanging. Okay. Let me do this and add him again. 
Okay. Okay. Hello, Papa Ghost. Can you hear me now? Should be on any second now. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Great. Oh. Guys, don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you so much, by the way, for your patience, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for waiting. Um, okay. Oh, don't worry. We'll get started soon. All right. Mm. Okay, so um, I don't know if Papa Ghost can hear me now. I want to suggest something. Papa Ghost, if you can hear me. Ah, I don't think he can still hear me. So, oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> my laptop was just okay so um papa know. goes okay okay so let's let's do it this way yeah you can actually join the twitter space that i've created all right and still leave your still leave your your screen on on youtube here so that we just have the conversation directly from twitter all right um is join oh. yeah is join twitter space so okay. i haven't been on this laptop since i got back home and <laughs> it's asking me for a lot of things oh my it's god i can imagine for a lot of things no i just want to get on Please. <laughs> He's banking the laptop. Okay. Um, Papa goes. So you can join um, my Twitter space. Twitter, the X app. So join the Twitter space. Oh. Um, Let me. We will be on. So, we will be on. Okay. Guys, please bear with us. We're gonna get this figured out, all right? Just bear with us, guys, please. Guys, you cannot hear me. Guys, can you hear me? Please, on YouTube. Guys, on YouTube, if you can I'm hear me, please. There. Almost there. Give it. Okay, great, great. Thank you, you can hear me, okay. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Hmm. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Um, okay. I wish I wish I I wish I had Papa Ghost number to call him now. Two more seconds. Okay. Should be there. Great. Guys, once again, my sincere apologies. As you can see, he's trying to sort it out. All right. So please, we're actually working towards it. So please, my apologies. All right. Um, I remember when we we're going to interview Doin last year. Doin had the same issues, you know. Um, I guess it's an Apple issue. I don't know. I don't know. Doin had the same complaints. So, guys, my apologies. And also remember, just as um, the core design rightly said, Papa Ghost has been off his technology for three months. So he probably has to try to get back into it, which is what he's trying to do right now. So my apologies, guys. My apologies. Please be with us. We're going to get right into it now. All right? My apologies. Okay, just getting onto the stream yard now. Okay, okay, great. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Two. Okay, how is it going, Papa Ghost? How is it going? Yeah, my things are just a bit slow. Uh, please forgive me. Yeah. 
And I remember, was it was it on Saturday when we we're having our live conversation? Somebody complains that because of load shedding, that there seems to be a delay in reception, you know, with our conversation. And quite a number of speakers that joined on Saturday, they experienced the same delays. So I'm suspecting that that's also another thing that um, Papa Ghost is having to deal with over there. But guys, don't worry, we will figure it out right now, okay? We'll figure it out. Uh, okay. I wish I had his number right now to, to send a message. Okay. Okay. Hello, Papa Ghost, can you hear me? Any second, any second. Give me two seconds. Excellent. Can you hear me? My device is extremely slow. I don't know. Okay. Um, Papa Ghost, I don't know if you can see me. Um, can you... Uh, how do I... Uh, I... Okay. If there's anybody else that is... Okay. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. If there's anybody that is around Papa Ghost right now, if you can tell him to join my Twitter space, that is another avenue. Yeah, if there's anybody that's around Papa Ghost right now, if you can just tell him I said he should join my Twitter space, all right? Join my Twitter space, send me a request, and let me make him a speaker on the Twitter space. That way, we can have this conversation. I don't even have my pen with me right now. Um, okay, hold on, guys. Let me do something. I need, I think, I think I need to write a message for Papa Ghost. Um, okay, join me on Twitter. Okay, Papa Ghost, I don't know if you can see this. Join me on Twitter. Yeah, join me on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. <sighs> oh my days. And it, it's hanging, you can't even see me. Guys, I am so sorry, I am so sorry, I am so sorry. Please forgive me, forgive me, I am so sorry. Uh, Uh, Papa Ghost is actually frozen now. He's currently frozen. Is there anybody that is around Papa Ghost right now? Can that person help me tell him to join me on Twitter? Because he's frozen and he can't hear me right now. So please, 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 if there's anybody around him, tell him to join me on Twitter, okay? Please. Um, uh, I don't know. Is is can any? But okay, hold on. I think. Yeah, <laughs> Guys, one second. I am doing everything I can here. Oh my God, this number is not working. Oh man. Guys, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. We're going to get this figured now, okay? Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to send an email, all right? Because I've sent messages via DM, but I don't think Andla is close to the dm guys thank you so much for your understanding and i'm sincerely sorry for this delay all right um
<sighs> Guys, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Hello, Papa Ghost. Hello. Uh, guys, I am doing everything I can, all right? This is what, okay, okay, guys, um, I just sent an email. We're going to get it working, all right? This same situation happened when we wanted to speak with doing, you know, but, but we got it sorted. We got it sorted. So let's... Please just bear with me, all right? Please bear with me. Please bear with me. Um, I'm doing everything I can to get Papa Ghost here again, all right? I'm dropping messages, I'm sending messages, and I'm still pleading if there's anybody around him at the moment, please tell him to um, join the Twitter space, all right? Tell him to join my Twitter space. That would be another perfect way for us to have this conversation, all right? If you are around him, if you are close to him, if you have his phone number to call him, please call him and tell him, all right? Um, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, thank you guys so much for understanding. Thank you all so much for understanding. Thank you so much for understanding. Your messages are very encouraging, guys, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. This was the same thing that happened when I wanted to interview doing. I almost had a panic attack. <laughs> but we ended up having the most incredible almost four hours of conversation. It was so it was so wholesome that day. So I, I believe that whatever is happening right now, it's just a stepping stone to how great today's conversation will be all right so i'm very positive right now very positive thank you so much darren thank you hoodie hoods thank you mabato thank you Escoco. thank you nulutando you guys are simply amazing <laughs> thank you sugar sugar mommy <laughs> i see you guys thank you so much thank you so much ah <sighs> So guys, um, here's the thing, and here's the tea. I have a lot of questions for Papa Ghost, right? And the reason I have a lot of questions for him is because um, I think he's going to be the first housemate that stayed till the last day, you know, that I will be having conversations with. And that's the reason the questions are many, all right? And if you agree with me, Papa Ghost was one of those housemates that had a multi-faceted existence in big brother's house i don't know if you get what i mean i'm going to explain as time goes on in this conversation his his journey in big brother's house it was in different layers different different layers and we're going to talk about it it's part of the questions i have for him you know he was the only housemate um, okay, it was supposed to be him and Lerato, but um, because Lerato got evicted, he turns out to be the only housemate that had, let me see how I put it here. I actually wrote it somewhere because it's a very interesting, yeah. So the way I put it, he was the only housemate that lived three lives in Big Brother's house. I think he's back. Hi, Papa Ghost. Hello, Papa Ghost. Can you hear me now? Hi, sorry, I'm oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, Papa Ghost? Oh, Papa Ghost is here on... I think he's... Okay, Papa Ghost, please, if you can hear me, send me a request on my Twitter space and let me bring you on as a speaker, all right? Send a request on Twitter space, please. All right. Send me a request on Twitter space. Oh, let me just invite you anyways. All right. I'm going to invite you on Twitter, on my Twitter space. All right. Um, accept my invitation, please. 
okay so i have sent you i've sent you an invitation to be a speaker on my twitter space please accept it all right Papa Ghost, I don't know if you can hear me. Please, if you can hear me. Yeah, Papa Ghost, I sent you an invitation on Twitter to be on my Twitter space. So please accept the invitation. Can you hear me? The only problem uh, here, Gloria, is that I don't, I don't manage my own Twitter. And um, that means that that request was gone yeah so the is your is your handler with you is your handler with you the there's a delay in our in our communication and it's because of the network um Papa Ghost, is your handler with you? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, tell the handler to accept my invitation. All right. I sent you an invitation. Ah, uh, he's he's gone out again. Guys, please don't go anywhere. Stay here. Oh, it's you and I today, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Guys, don't go anywhere. It's you and I today. This conversation will hold. It will. I'm very positive. Handler, please. This is the Papa Ghost Handler. If you can hear me right now, we're currently live on YouTube and Twitter. So on Twitter, because of all these network issues, send me a request on my space or just simply accept my request, all right? Because I sent you a request or an invitation rather to be a speaker of my space. So Handler, please accept my request, please. <laughs> oh, my days. <sighs> Is there anybody here that has Papa Ghost number? Because I don't. <laughs> Is there anybody here? We're all involved in this together, guys. You need to help me. <laughs> you need to help me out. Is there anybody that has Papa Ghost number or is close to Papa Ghost right now? You have his Instagram. Yeah, I'm also sending. I've been sending messages on Twitter and it's Handler that is supposed to, you know, check. I don't know. There's in, oh hey God. His numbers are not going. Oh, man. Um, oh, man. Okay, guys, whilst we are still waiting, I was actually explaining something, all right? Let's not be deterred. I was actually explaining something. I was saying that um, Papa Ghost was the only housemate that lived three lives in Big Brother's house if you know what I mean, but if you don't, here's what I mean. Um, so he was the only housemate that experienced living in the main house, you know, in the mansion like that, you know, with all these different individuals from different backgrounds, different walks of lives, you know. And then he and Lerato had the opportunity to live together in the cabin. The cabin, the cabin is more confined. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Okay, they are responding. Okay, guys, one second, please. One second. Okay, guys, one second, please. I'm trying to send suggestions to Papa Ghost on how he can, you know, easily join us, all right? Okay. So, as I was saying, um, 
he was also the only housemate that, you know, moving from the main house, he was able to stay in the cabin with Lerato, who was his friend and ally, you know, and the cabin was an entirely different world of its own because it is more confined than the main house. Now, why did I say so? The main house, of course, it's bigger. It's more spacious. There are different rooms. There's the restroom. There's also the garden, right? There's the garden there. There's the arena where housemates can go to work out in the mornings and also um, play any other type of game that, you know, Big Brother um, instructs them to participate in. And then it was also the only housemate that returned back to the house and also lived in some sort of isolation for a bit. And that was after Lerato's eviction. Okay, hold on, he's back. Let me see. Hello, Papa Ghost. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Glory. <sighs> Finally, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I think it's time for us to start officially. <laughs> okay. Is is it is that still a delay? Hmm. I think there's still a delay. Hello, Papa Ghost. Hello. Please bring me Nuno's Wi-Fi. Um, Papa Ghost, can you hear me? Please bring me Nuno's Wi-Fi. Minus yes, I can hear you, Glory. Oh, better, better, better. You are welcome. You are welcome. Um, apologies yes, yes. for the stress. Thank you I, so I mean, much I for your patience, and I apologize for. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm glad that finally you're able to join us. I'm um, I'm happy you're here. How are you? I'm I'm doing really good and I'm grateful nice. to be here. Um I have nice. Like nice. I've I'm good. Tried my best to stay away from too much talk about Big Brother, but I found myself. Ah, I think there's still a bit of delay. I think there's still a bit of delay. Um, Papa Ghost, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you oh. loud and clear. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, the last thing I heard from you was you were trying to stay away from Big Brother conversations, but you find yourself here. I didn't hear that statement completely. What were you saying? Yes, um, I, I, I was saying that I've since I've come out the house, I've tried to stay away from all the Big Brother conversations, um, especially <laughs> on on the internet. But I found myself on your page watching your reviews one after the other you know and the we were experiencing the journey it was quite accurate you're 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 quite good at this and i'm i'm only grateful to be here with you sharing the space wow thank you thank you so much thank you so much i think i learned at some point that you're pisces i think i'm also pisces so i feel like we we kind of have some things in common um, oh, that's really? probably one of the reasons. <laughs> yes, I'm Pisces. <laughs> I'm Pisces, February 27th, to be precise. <laughs> yeah. So, watching you, I could totally relate to a lot of the things you oh, were you're, doing. You're you're... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I could totally relate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, so let's take it from the very top, <laughs> all right? Let's take it from the very top. So beginning with your sure. name, yeah. Beginning with your name, Papa Ghost, that is a very, that's a very fascinating yeah. name. 
almost like an enigma because <laughs> I look at you and I look at your name and I can't seem to find the connection. Because if I were to name you, if I were to name you, I think I would name you something entirely different from Papa Ghost. So the question is, <laughs> what is your real name? Yes. What is your real name? What is the meaning of your name? And how did you come to embrace the name Papa Ghost? Well, my real name is Usabe Lo Nube. Uh, okay. Um, if you know Zulu, you know the meaning of that name. Uh, yeah. Sab Please interpret. Ghost is an amalgamation. Papa Ghost is an amalgamation of names. So my friends used to call me Ghost because we became a thing. You know, I was the guy who would randomly appear in Johannesburg and randomly appear in another part of the country. Mm. Um, in my younger days, I was a DJ and it kind of allowed me you know, flying in, into town and leaving school sometimes. So my friends started yeah. calling me Ghost. Hmm. Um, hmm. And that kind of was alias for years. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Pieces. Anyway. But um, one, my particular papa or puppy, and those kind of got linked together, and then I became Papa Ghost. I remember um, on my Instagram is where the first place I put that name up. Um, you know, a papa from the family, a ghost from the friends. So mixing those two together created the name. Mm. That's that's nice. That's nice. I mean, you've got yeah. the swag. The way you carry yourself, it's like, I can't come and kill myself. <laughs> I just want to be chilled. <laughs> so that's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and I said when I speak to you, I must tell you this, you have a very soothing voice. Your voice has got this calming effect that even when you're angry, your voice is still very pleasant to listen to. So it's like, no matter what you do or say, <laughs> even if you're angry, just keep talking and just be pouring the anger like that. That's how soothing your voice is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lesson i've learned in life um to stay calm you know it's very important to stay calm as a person stay grounded and not to react to everything and um not to overreact also to everything and thank you for the compliment mm -hmm. i i should probably do like sleepy time tapes where i record my voice and <laughs> people can listen to you, it if they can't to go to sleep <laughs> You need to. It, it will be perfect for ASMR. <laughs> Trust me, it will be perfect. It will be perfect. All right, now I'll, th I'll you... think. I'll think about it. I'll now you should. You should. Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay. Now let's let's gradually get into the conversation. You are out of the house. The show mm -hmm. is over. You were inside a confined, yeah. toxic space for three months. Now you're out. It's like you just came out of a cave. How has it been like, you know, trying to yeah. reintegrate back into society? How has it been like for you? Uh, personally, I'm trying not to do a lot of things right now. Um, trying to spend time at home with my family. Um, also, in terms of moving forward and reintegrating. Um, making plans, you know, making plans, particularly in the home space, trying to get into um, just uh, a script writing course right now, uh, just to, you know, further expand my knowledge of storytelling um, and just focusing on, on embarking on the journey of, you know, script writing, directing and all that kind of stuff. But more than anything, I've just been home with my family. I've attended a few events but you know, just to, just to let the people know that i'm out here and i'm alive but other than that i've just been trying to stay grounded hmm. whatever i do next that's solid hmm. yeah 
Great, yeah. great. I love the fact that you're not trying to rush things because yeah. that was that was a very rigorous yeah. experience you you just came out from, you know. Um, these are Absolutely. people you don't Absolutely. you don't know from anywhere. Yeah, the whole environment, the toxicity, the competition, the tension. I mean, I can imagine how overwhelmed you were yeah. when you came out. You know, but but another thing I want to understand is. Looking at you, I can assume a lot of things, right? Which is typical of human nature. But I would rather hear from you directly. What was yeah. your life like before you went into such a war zone? <laughs> because that was a war zone. <laughs> um, my life basically revolved around um, the brainstorm table, which is where I generally put down ideas for stories, TV programs, movies, you know, things like that. I spend a lot of time writing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do enjoy mm -hmm. writing. I do enjoy um, storytelling and kind of finding ways to amaze people about stories, you know, or within stories. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a huge chunk of what I did. I would like to sit and write. Um, but mm -hmm. mostly, I think before going into the house, I I was focused a lot on my music and um, mm. my modeling, which, you know, puts food on the table. <laughs> but um, mm. I think I think more than anything, I spend a lot of time at home. <laughs> I'm a very yeah. I'm a home body type of person. I don't I'm not too much for partying and stuff like that. I have a friend who's a DJ. I go out with her. Like she forces me to go out. I have another friend of mine. Um, who works in PR and I sometimes I'm her assistant and mm. that's when I go out. But other than that, I'm at the theater. I love the theater. I love to go watch plays. Um, that's the one outing that I do. Hmm. You know, I just picked a few things from what you just yeah. said now about your life outside. Your friend is a DJ, they invite you out, you go obviously to show support. You have a friend that's into PR, you go as an assistant, you know. It goes to show that your life of servitude yeah. is something that's been happening for the longest time because we saw a great deal of that. It's on the who show. I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've that's heard you speak a, a couple of a number of times. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, on the show, I heard you talk yeah, it's definitely about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, on the show, I heard you talk a, a, a number of times about how you enjoy, you know, supporting the people in your life, even the people you get into relationships with. You ensure that the moment they mention anything they want to do, you try as much as possible to pull the strings you know, to ensure that they achieve or accomplish that thing that yeah. they are choosing. What sort of, what, what does that do for you? Does it make you happy? What does it do for you? Um, I feel like as people, we all have been endowed with a certain journey and with certain capabilities. And uh, I feel like one of my responsibilities in life is to help people navigate through the difficulties of reaching their goals or you know chasing mm -hmm. their dreams because i'm one person who has had a very i'll say arduous journey um in, in pursuing my dreams i have very big dreams <laughs> and um i've had to find obstacles on the way i've had to overcome them and i've had to tell myself that no matter what happens I need to do my best. I need to keep going and I need to keep believing. And I think that kind of energy, it really serves people in a good way when they feel down or they feel like they're incapable. I'm that person mm. that will pull up and be like, yo, it's not done. You're not done. You can do this, you know, mm. push through. Um, hence, I earned the name Star Maker from my friends. Uh mm. Because mm. because of such behaviors, you know, like I, I, I believe that every dream is worth chasing. There is no dream too small or too big. Every dream is worth chasing. And that's why we're here as people in life is to to live out these dreams and to fulfill our desires. 
you know, in a spiritual level, not just materially, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. We're going to revisit this angle again because it, it, it played a, a great deal in how you handled task and wager preparations in the house. So we're going to revisit it again because it's a very important aspect of your experience, of your journey on the show. And I feel like it's something that okay. really played out a great deal. And people were just sort of myopic towards seeing that. So we definitely will visit it again. But for now, let's yeah. get back into your yeah. life, you know, as, as an ex CMO share housemate. Now, viewers tend to be extremely critical, very emotional, and sometimes overly judgmental with high expectations on individuals that have decided to take that bold step, you know, towards becoming a housemate on the Big Brother show. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of yeah. boldness, a lot of bravery to expose yourself that much, to participate, to be vulnerable, and to really sell out yourself towards giving content and entertainment, you know? Now, I've looked at you. You, you come across as a very fun-loving, but also very grounded person. What really motivated you to participate in the CMO share season? Because if I saw you on a regular day, I would never think you would want to even participate on the show. So what motivated you? Um, so this so this is something that goes way back. Um, my late father, who passed away in 2017, he was one of the biggest Big Brother fans. He loved the show. Uh, from years ago, he always loved the show, and he would always say to me, "You should enter the show. You know, you do so well. You know, you should enter the show. I would enjoy watching you. I want to see what you act like when you know, when your mm -hmm. guard is down. You know, um, and we had a very, we had a very cool relationship, him and I, especially when it came to um entertainment and media. You know, we shared a lot in 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 common in the sense that." Um, we enjoyed certain things together and he enjoyed Big Brother and he was always like, I should go on the show. Um, so yeah. coming to last year when the audition um, poster came out, four different people mm -hmm. sent it to me in the space of two days. And at first I was ignoring it like, oh, no guys, no guys, I don't think I have this level of sacrifice within me, you know? <laughs> Um, <laughs> but then I spoke to my mother, I spoke to my mother and she's probably my biggest fan and my best friend. And she was like, mm. you should do this. You know, it's about time you do something bold in your life. It's about time that, you know, you go beyond, you know, the boundaries that you set for yourself. And she was just mm. so supportive just off the idea. I haven't done an audition tape yet. She was just so supportive and just so positive. And there's nothing I love like making my mother proud. So I think mm. there was that inspiration. Uh, my mother, my father, my friends that sent me the audition tape. Um, then I went in and I did the tape and I was just like, we'll see where it goes, you know. But mm. I don't think up until the time when I got my final approval or my invitation, I don't think I had decided quite that I was gonna go on the show yet. I think a part of me was still like, actually, I just want to see if I can make it, you know. <laughs> but yeah. you know, um, as days drew closer, I went back to the idea. Um, and as days drew closer, the reality of what it means to be in the Big Brother house started to set in. And fortunately, I have mechanisms and certain things I do within meditation and um, just you know, mind exercises to prepare myself for that environment. And I'm so glad I did that because I was prepared. And they mm. came out. They came out at me. Like, I don't get how nobody sees <laughs> that, but, like, my housemates... <laughs> my housemates did not want to see me. <laughs> we know. We know. Trust me. Yeah. The, the things we saw, mm. oh, my God. <laughs> we will get there. We will get there. Now, yeah. speaking about your um the house you know the season the show see emotion disruption as they called it the first time yes you yeah. heard of the thing what was the first thing that came to your mind as prepared as you were 
what was the first thing that came to your mind did you they didn't make you think of strategies they didn't make you think of oh my god when i get into the house i'm gonna do this what was it i think i'm a disruptor by nature um so for me it was a matter of how much it was a matter of on a scale of zero to ten how much are we going to show how much are we going to let out and um i remember saying to myself <laughs> i can't possibly put it on a 10 because then everyone's gonna hate me but even though i i dialed it down i kind of felt like i still was not the favorite but um for me i'm i'm naturally a disruptor and i'm naturally very stern as a person and yeah. i believe in standing for what you believe in and sticking to it you know and i mm -hmm. think as far as strategy is concerned i did not really think of a strategy i just told myself mm -hmm. be in the house do your best be yourself and when not if when you get to week 10 then go all out like just terrorize everybody in the house but mm -hmm. um when week 10 came i just i was in a different state of mind by then so i just decided to abort mission Hmm. You know, you know something. I'm glad you said yeah. what you said. You know about being a disruptor by nature, right? And the way I, as a viewer sure. and an analyst of the show, interpreted that, because that was what I saw in you, right? Now, the way I interpreted that was, this guy is not bad. He's just a non-conformist. And society sees people that are non-conformists yeah. as disruptors. They'll be like, oh, you want to break the norm. You want to, it's like society has a straight line, but non-conformists are always those yeah, people that yeah. will ask questions. Why do, why must we have a straight line? Why yeah. must everybody line up for this thing? We can break the line and create more lines to cut long, you know, to cut the long process. And I felt like that was exactly Absolutely. what you went. Absolutely. You were breaking the norms. We're breaking boundaries, and it was like a culture shock for your fellow housemates. Hence, the reason they just could not deal. <laughs> yeah, it was very fascinating. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right to speak yeah. that way? No, it was. You're right. It was. It was like that. It was very fascinating for me. And I think what what got to a lot of my housemates is how nonchalant I am about things. You know, I am very, very unbothered about a lot of things, and you can try and uh throw shade at me you can try and you know throw me off but chances are you know i'm probably gonna try and have a deep psychological conversation with you about it instead of freaking out so mm -hmm. i think in light of being the person that i am and them getting to experience it and there being this whole culture shock and um just misunderstanding i mm -hmm. think I th I think they I I think they realized very early on that okay this guy is here <laughs> and he is big and I mean I used to say that to them it's not that now I'm out and I and I and I I have a voice now no I used to say that to them that actually guys you can feel you know and one of the housemates actually even mentioned when she left like she was so surprised when she got out and she found out that I don't have the biggest fan base outside I think it was yeah. me actually who said that. And that's yeah. because of the environment in the house. You know, you, you yeah. could feel the energies. You knew who were in control at different times and who we could mm. rely on for certain things and who we couldn't. And I think I made my, I set my role out very quickly in the house as being who I am. Mm. And also the no nonsense disruptor that I am at the same time, I was like, I'm not going to take any crap from anybody. And if anybody wants to duel it out with me, I'm not going to give you the same energy back. I'm going to give you a much more mm. mature, more grounded energy. And it kind of deflates you. And I think that's what happened with mm. Mac as well. He wanted, he wanted a brawl. And like, I don't brawl. I'm a peaceful person. Mm. Da, Papa Ghost. Yeah. I, must, I must tell you for real. Now that we're talking, <laughs> I must tell you for real. You really starved a lot of your fellow housemates off drama. Because there's a typical type of drama that comes with the Big Brother show. <laughs> it's that type of market woman drama. Yeah. Come at me, come at me. I'm going to do 
you with you. Yeah. They were looking for that. See, they were thirsty yeah. for that yeah. kind of drama. But yeah. you were like ice cold water whenever the drama was coming you just diffuse it Blah. i'm like Chai, this man yeah come absolutely. on absolutely. <laughs> just that's, the that's, how, that's how you deal with it that's how you deal with it you know um they say if, if you want a fire to die out you just deprive it of oxygen you don't try and put it out so that's what i was doing um and oh, i could God. tell people that were coming at me with that energy and wanting to you know create some kind of enemy complex or let's a rivalry and like I'm really not into that um mm. I don't think I don't think at, at, at any point in the house that I feel any genuine before I uh, uh, I was just I was happy to see I was happy more than anything I was happy to see people stepping out of their shells and trying something new because for a lot of them like it was something new you know to, uh, yeah be confrontational you know and you know try and rile people up it was new i could tell they're amateurs yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyways let's talk about your fellow housemates the first time meeting them right i mean um as a homebody that you were before getting into the house, I don't know, I'm not really sure if you were actually prepared for the colorful personalities that you met on that very first night. So the question is, what was your first impression of seeing all of these diverse people, in fact, the diverse crowd of people that you encountered that very first day. And what what was your first realization? Did you think, oh my God, I'm in, sh I'm in deep shit? Or did you feel, mm, it's gonna be a walk in the park? What was, your, what was, what was it for you? <laughs> um, <laughs> my first impression upon getting into the house, I remember, one of the first things I thought, and I had had this thought before going into the house, that I'm going to be the oldest person there. You know? Okay. And as much as people might not, as much as people might not make it a thing, ageism is real. And people will judge you or judge your actions based yes. on your age. And they'll always attribute it to your age. So already going in, I told myself, I'm 26. Let's chop off 10 years of my timeline and see how that goes. Um, upon going into the house, I remember thinking, firstly, what a bunch of beautiful people, like aesthetically, mm. like they're beautiful. They're all very beautiful people. And mm. the second thing I thought is, goodness, I'm going to be living with, kids. you know, <laughs> like, oh my God, it's kids. It's going to be chaotic. And, um, because, because, because we're all walking into the space and we're all getting acquainted. Like everybody yeah. wants their moment, you know, and everybody's trying to be like, "Hey, look at me, I'm here." And yes, my 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 position was always to just observe for as long as I could, just observe everything for as long as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't, I did not at all feel threatened by any of them. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be again me. I, I'm cocky, whatnot. No, I was not threatened by any of them. I did not feel like any of them. In fact, if anybody, if anybody I felt threatened by, it was Lerato. Um, <laughs> Lerato was just naturally bold from, from the onset. And she mm. carried big energy with her. And people could feel it, you know. Yes. Um, but we did not, we didn't, we didn't really interact that much in the first day. I interacted mm. more with uh, Bravo, Bravo B. And Makeke, who I kind of like, mm. was already forming an alliance with, just like through friendship. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. That so that that that's me initially. First first few moments in the house. Mm. Okay, okay, nice. By the way, you and Lerato looked like you were just returning from the altar on the very first day because you, Lerato, and I think one other person walked in through those yeah. doors. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> so you people were looking yes. like, oh my God, we just returned from taking our vows. What's popping? Where's the party at? It looked really funny, you know, throwing it and, back and now imagine. and looking back like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Retro- okay. Retrospectively, the Rato and I situation is hilarious because we walked in like bride and groom. We got yeah. evicted together. Um, we went yeah. to the cabin. It's just, you cannot write that kind of journey. It's It's just, you know, destiny, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting storyline for both of you. Now, you had seen your fellow housemates by this time. Yeah. Your first thoughts, your first impressions had happened. Now, there was a very first meeting, and I think that was um, after you guys had received your brief for your first wager task. You were very, very, in fact, let me just say generally, you were very, very bold and subtly assertive. You're not forceful with your ideas, your opinions, but you are sort of assertive because you're sure of what you are saying. You're very knowledgeable about that and you don't conceal it because you know it's going to be helpful. Yeah. You are also very unapologetic about yeah. your knowledge, your exposure, your, your expertise, because it would definitely come in handy. Now, do you think that all of those qualities that you expressed from that very first meeting played to your advantage or it sort of became a disadvantage for you and sort of set you up as a target or did you just enjoy how everything proceeded from there uh i have to say uh glory it was a double-edged sword for me because from the perspective of the head of house it's imperative to have someone of the caliber of ghost in your council when you have a task at hand. So as far as the head of houses are concerned, I'm up until, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of want him. You want him as a, a member of your parliament because he's going to bring, yes. he's, he's going to bring work. He's going to bring ideas and he's going to make sure that we follow through and we deliver. Um, mm-hmm. But from the perspective of, housemate who's just sitting um and listening it was not very favorable because it's like who is this guy and who told him that he's in charge you know i got a lot of that and i always felt like the the this position that i have taken i have taken it no one gave it to me and you feel free to do whatever you wish as well with your Mm -hmm. voice so I think it was a double-edged sword from the perspective of head of, of a head of house. It was very great mm. to have Ghost on the team, but from the other side, it was like, why is Ghost always in charge? I always got all of that. Why is Ghost always in charge? You're not even the head of house. Why are you in charge of the task? Why? Hmm. Yeah. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? What happened if I sit back just for a little bit? And usually, as you saw in week three, we had a talk show to do. There was a mess brewing, a very big mess that was brewing. And um, I remember that's. And I'd said to him, hey, listen, I have some ideas, but before we even get there, we need to decide on format. Like there is a certain mm-hmm. format for a, t- uh, for a talk show and it needs to look a certain way. So before we can even cast people as as the whoever's let's 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 figure out the format and figure out how this thing looks and at Mm. first it seemed like he was on board and we were going to be working together but i think somewhere along the line he changed his mind without letting me know and he kind of blindsided Mm. me so i decided to take the back seat but i did carry on working in the background i did carry on working Mm. i did carry on formatting the show properly scripting it properly and um, just making sure that it's segmented properly. So by the time that mm. the whole thing is falling apart and all the housemates are turning off him and they're like, listen, dude, we, we are nowhere as far as this task stands and we have tomorrow is our deadline. Um, I remember they came to me, they were like, Ghost, can you do this? You know, and I was just like, sure, I'm ready, let's do it. You know, um, mm. yeah, that, that, that was for me the best part of being in the house like getting those tasks, putting mm. your skill to the test, you know, practically. Yeah. Um, playing, it's also playing, you know, you get to play art, um, creating content, media. It's You have to be in a state of play. You have to 
enjoy what you're doing. It can't be painstaking, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I really, I really think I enjoyed that. And I think for some, my work ethic again was a threat because it's like he's doing too much, you know. Mm. It's too technical. We should simplify. It. But some things are just meant to mm. be the way that they are, and you can't change it just because you feel like it. So mm. yes, your question was a double-edged sword. It was a good thing yeah. and a bad thing that I was so vocal so confident Mm. when it came to work in the house Mm. yeah i mean i mean we we actually a lot of people anyways a lot of people that were being honest with themselves they actually saw that i mean papa ghost come on you are the most indispensable element of that house i mean wow people needed to leave i'm telling you from a business perspective yeah you were the most and this is not me throwing shade yeah. at any other housemate hey they were pulling their own weight in their own way but okay. there was never a yeah. wager task week that would go by without you literally carrying on your shoulders the core the foundation of the work that needed to be done and that's a fact so you know there's this yeah. saying that oh Anybody can be yeah. replaced. Nobody is replaceable. Papa goes, I'm telling you, you are the most indispensable. There were even <laughs> conversations about, you know, there were even conspiracy conversations like, oh, let's kick him out. Let's vote him and his wife out. But later on, certain individuals from those conversations will still go and sit down somewhere and advise themselves mm. that, ah, if this guy leaves this house, we are doomed because we cannot pull off this preparation by ourselves. So I think you should give yourself your own flowers sure. for being that much indispensable. You know, Thank it's you. not easy to be carrying a house. And and in a way, you. you were literally carrying the bellies of 23 people on your shoulders. So well done for that. I give you your flowers. Take your accolades, man. Yes. You deserve I'm glad you see it. it. I'm, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You deserve it. But, but, but now, I, I, let's sorry, come I'm, to... Sorry, I'm glad you see it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was Can what I, it was. Yeah, there's a bit of a lag in the chat. I'm, I'm glad you see it that way because for me, the way to task presentations determine how comfortable you live in the house. And... Mm-hmm. I t- told myself that if I have any early in my inspiration, and like a lot of people might not have understood, but, but Larato was a driving force in that because she would be like, Ghost, I need kiwi. I can't sleep if I don't eat kiwi, you know? And I'll just be like, mm. that doesn't come with basics. So it was like in the back of my mind, like, this is your job. On a Monday, your boss gives you a task and your deadline is Thursday. If you do not mm. deliver, you will starve. If you deliver, you will live. So that that literally that's literally how I saw it. And for me, a lot of what I did in the house revolved around the way to task presentations and all the little mm-hmm. different artistic pieces that we got. Um yeah, particularly to do with mm. Papa goes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Glory. Okay, great, great, great. Now, I have a question to ask you, yeah, before I ask this next question. There was something that was very obvious in that house that I saw, yeah. right? So, when meetings and deliberations are happening, mm. certain housemates are quiet. They are holding back information or they don't want to talk. Now, when certain people like you and Lerato decide to be the first to speak, since nobody is speaking, it becomes a problem. And that became the bone of contention for you and Lerato, especially till the end of the season. Do you think that was a strategy by them just to create drama? Or do you think they they don't... I mean, please tell us, what do you think? Because there are things I want to say, but I don't want to say it, so it doesn't come off as shade. But what do you think? Because you were the one living that life. I I think um, they genuinely, in the meetings, were afraid maybe to voice their opinions because people are scared 
to be looked at in a certain way and like uh, uh, how can you ask that no we can't do that you know especially in those situations where your message or your idea is falling upon a lot of different ears and they're going to give you different kinds of feedback or reactions i think a lot of people were afraid mm -hmm. to kind of you know bear themselves and you know offer themselves uh to the mm -hmm. to to the to our community that we had in the house and i think for them, those that are not afraid, it's like, why aren't you afraid? You know, it's, it, it became, it, mm. it became, like you said, bone of contention. And it's like, yeah, they think they know everything, but at the yeah. same time, you're harboring information, your option that was happening in the house. A lot of people were projecting their insecurities and, you know, mm. personal inadequacies on other people. Like, I'm not a perfect person, but I mean, mm. I try and do the work personally that I need to do to be more emotionally balanced. And I think that's the one thing that I walked into the house with is that I'm emotionally balanced. And you can say whatever you want to me about me. I know that that's to me and about me. It doesn't define who I am. And I think for a lot of people, yeah. they're still trying to navigate that part of their life. Still trying to yeah you know, discover who they are in that sense. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I must, I must give it to you. I must give it to you. And this comes down to my next question. Papa Ghost, you, there was, there was, there was a lot of arrows and daggers directed at you and, Le and Lerato, but especially you as well, because people felt, as you just mentioned that, he likes acting like he knows it all. He doesn't give other people opportunity to speak. And one of my arguments out here was, I don't understand. There's nobody that's below 18 in that house. Did anybody seal your lips from speaking, right? So why can't you also be expressive? Must he teach you how to be expressive? He's not there to be your mother or your father. But anyways, here's the question. Looking at all the toxicity that, you know, was directed at you for just being confident and audacious how were you still able to keep your head above it all and still work together with all of these people as a collective and individually to bring the best out of them just so that you guys can present an an entertaining wager because i saw how if you're not talking to liema or encouraging liema you're encouraging sinai you're encouraging this one you're encouraging that one and they go on that stage in the arena and they give their best but most of these people will still sit down and still i mean i understand it's a game but dude weren't you bothered yeah um to be quite honest i was not in the least bothered by any of that uh i believe that as people, one of our primary objectives is to bring out the best in each other. And if if somebody is there and you see something in them, you know, you can only stand to benefit by helping them, you know, unlock the different layers and levels of who they are. Um, by mm -hmm. if, if you try and step on them, I don't think I don't think you would achieve any kind of spiritual enlightenment or any kind of spiritual growth from that. And I believe mm. feeding into people and giving people the tools and the keys that they need to, you know, better themselves is is a very, very virtuous way to live. And I believe in that. Um it doesn't it didn't matter to me who was saying what about me behind the scenes. Um I was not I was not too bothered by the chattering and the gossip around the house. What I cared about most is that when I speak if we have work, you will listen because you know where I stand and you know that when it comes to this, there is no bias. I have no qualm with you. I might maybe think that you are a certain type of person in a personal capacity because we live together and we share an intimate space. Mm -hmm. But in the work sense, we have one boss and the boss says mm -hmm. Thursday is the deadline. And for me, what yes. matters the most is that when it comes to those situations where we're working, I wanted people to take me seriously in the house and to listen to me. Because a lot of the times, and this is also not to shade anybody, they would read the brief and not understand it. 
you know, I would mm. literally go back and read the brief about three times in front of myself, break it down, separate it into the different requirements, and then come back and be like, guys, we need to have a meeting because mm. I think that's another thing that didn't sit nicely with um, my housemates is that why? Why is he saying this? We're, we we all agreed we're doing one thing. Why is he, this one human being, coming back and saying it's wrong? It's wrong, guys. It's It was wrong, guys. If you're there, <laughs> it was wrong. Yeah. You know, from week two, because yeah. in week one, we failed because nobody was helping anybody else. Who, mm. It's about you. It's about the individual. But at the same, it's orientation week. Get to know everybody. Mm. You know, learn different people's um, skill sets. Who can help you? Who's good at gluing? Who's good at painting? Like I, I made mm. it the first because um, I was literally going around hopping from canvas to canvas. My canvas was so simple and so basic because I spent so much time on other people's canvases and I enjoyed that. I created bonds that mm. lasted till this very day because of that action. Come week two, mm. we get the brief. Everybody thinks they know what it is. I remember s sitting outside and I, I actually almost had my first little tizzy in the house <laughs> that day on that Monday because I was like, this is incorrect. This is not what Big Brother's asking. And I mm. remember calling the head of house, which was now at the time, I was like, now this thing is incorrect. Mm. We're not supposed to be doing this. We're supposed to be doing that. And I explained it to her. I had to break it down to her. But she still was like, no, let's just call a meeting with everybody. Like, no, you're the head of house. You have authority. You can veto all of this. She's like, no, let's mm. call everybody. So we called everybody. And then she's like, Papa goes, please tell the house. I'm like, okay, fine. I will tell the house. House, <laughs> Big Brother's asking us to create a fashion line that is inspired by the different cultures, you know, and to create a range, yeah. not to make traditional outfits. Because if we do that, we're going to fail. And um, <laughs> I think, I think like a lot of my housemates were just like upset that. I dictated a lot of the workflow. Um, it wasn't because I felt like I was superior to any of them. It's just that sometimes they like to rush into things and not take the time to plan accordingly um, for mm. for for work, you know. And I believe in planning mm. meticulously. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, kudos to you. We saw that totally, totally, totally. We saw that, but. Here's a question, right? You can choose to answer or ignore, all right? Now, in the first week when all of these things was happening, right, um, people accusing you of not being the head of house but wanting to take charge as the head of house being controlling, do you think, I mean, looking back now, mm. do you think Mitch actually set you up? Because dude was literally delegating to you, but he wasn't defending your honor when conversations like that would come yeah. up. So do you think that really set you up for the game? What do you think? I think Midge was afraid to take the reins himself. And through me, he found a vessel that he could kind of, you know, uh, kind of see his power at play. Um, and for me, I was very well aware of what he was doing. I was aware that he was in way over his head, being the first head of house, um, and already being somebody who would assume this position of authority in the house, which is, I wouldn't say that was a strategy. I just was like, okay, somebody's got to speak about order here. you know. So I think he took advantage of that. But at the same time, I was well, I was well aware that he was not defending, defending me defending my honor in any way when people were uh, calling me out for pretending, wanting to be the head of house or pretending to be the head of house. Um, but at the same time, it was quite inspirational to me because I was like, oh, I guess that means you feel me then. <laughs> I guess mm -hmm. you, it means you feel my presence, <laughs> you know. Um, and that, that's, that's important, I think, in that space. It's important mm -hmm. for people to feel your presence. Might be in a positive yeah. sense, might be in a negative sense, but they have to feel. Mm. They have to know that you're there, you know. Hence, mm. I, I I heard that I would be sleeping, but I would still be the topic of conversation that's trending on the timelines mm. because people are talking about me in the house and like 
they didn't get that they 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 were doing my work for me while I was sleeping in terms of PR, but like mm. as far as um uh, Mitch setting me up, I could see what was happening. I was well aware. I was happy to be his right hand man and deliver, you know, whatever needed to be delivered. It took us mm. two days to do a duty roster. And that's because I said, mm. guys, the house is a mess. We need to we need to delegate ourselves into teams. And we need to figure out how we're going to maintain this house because it's on us, you know. Mm. And <laughs> that duty roster mm. literally came two days in. And I don't think it would have come in that first week had I not said anything. So I was happy mm-hmm. to play that position of being uh, the head of house's PA <laughs> or spokesperson. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, you know even what though was it did not make me the most favorite person in the house. Like yeah, because what was also interesting about that week, and you know, I think people had to learn from it, was the fact that he was sleeping a lot. Jude was literally reaping the benefits of yeah. winning the head of house challenge, and you were the one doing the work. So, in as much as you were being talked about and disliked and whatnot by your fellow housemates, it became a learning curve. It sets the pace for how they would now want yeah. to handle the house, lead the house when it's their turn, you know? So it was just very hilarious to watch from a yeah. mental perspective. Now, not really, yeah, because we were just watching like, okay, okay, people are not liking this guy, but you are learning from him that, okay, <laughs> you don't want to be the sleeping head of house. You want to be the active head of house. And let me tell yeah. you the truth. Active that house. is why you see that some people that became head of house, you see that they were actually trying so hard to fill in the shoes that you created in the first week. Mm-hmm. So that's another yeah. plus to you, Papa Ghost. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's another plus. Yeah. Thank you, Glory. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's move on. Let's move on. I mean, <laughs> let's move on now okay. to the wife. Our very own Mama Ghost, Levato Medice. Listen, I want to tell you say? this firsthand. <laughs> I want to tell you this firsthand, yeah? Okay. Um, there, are, there are certain videos that I have done over time about relationships on the Big Brother show. And people that are a part of my community, yeah. they know. They know that Glory Elijah is not a fan of ships. I don't like it. I do not encourage yeah. it. I, I, I very much detest mm. it for very obvious reasons because it's always <laughs> about, they yes. sexualize it. People that engage in it, they sexualize it. Yeah. There's no yeah. high level thinking from ships in Big Brother's house. It's always the kissing and the smooching yeah. and that is the best they can offer. And I find it very disgusting. So over time, I have always yeah. said that for a new season of any Big Brother show, Big Brother Ninja or Big Brother South Africa, I long, I am desperate to see a couple that will play a mental game. And then lo and behold, you and Lerato happened on my screen. <laughs> and you guys were giving me everything I ever wanted. <laughs> now, see, I was, I was basking in the glory of your union. As hectic as it was, yeah, I was loving right. it. I was basking yeah. in it. And I could, I was attracted to you both. Like, men, it was, I had a sapiosexual relationship yeah. with both of you at the same time. You guys were <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, you guys were fascinating to watch. But let, enough about me yeah. now, enough about me. Now, down to you. You people were so mentally compatible. I was shocked. What was the attraction? Mm. So, I mean, I think with Lerato and I, as much as we didn't know that here in real life in the city, we might have crossed paths because we attend the same kind of parties. Um when we do we we have you know so many similarities when it comes to our journeys as artists and Lorato's a writer by the way and she also she writes children's books she 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 does a lot of things in the children's space um and i mm. happen to be a lover of children i'm known in my family for 
being Papa, you know, to all the kids. Mm. Um, I think mm. what happened was that one really bold character mm. kind of fell in to the same space at the same time. And yes, it was a sequence of events that led to Nalato and I eventually, you know, even seeing each other. It's because she was not feeling mm. well. And being the empathetic person that I am, naturally, I was worried about that girl because I was like, hey, man, that, that bubbly girl from day one, where is she? She's suffering from headaches. Oh, my goodness. Let me go check on her. Hey, bubbly girl, what's happening? How are you doing? No, I'm doing better. Da, 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 da. If I can do anything for you, let me know. I can mix you a concoction in the kitchen. You know, sometimes healing, it doesn't come from the medication you take. It comes from just the care that somebody might give. Absolutely. Somebody cares Absolutely. enough for you to feel better. So that's where our thing was born. And once we started talking, it was like, no ways. Where have you been? It's like we've been neighbors our whole lives and we've never met. <laughs> and I was so fascinated by her because she was adamant on being in your face about <laughs> um she was adamant about being in your face about the siamosha theme i was very yeah. tactful about it you know i i i, I mm. tried to plant seeds you know start a fire walk away but nothing too drastic loretta was just like i want to turn this house upside down and i loved that you know she helped me unlock the more playful side of myself in the house which is why, like, later on, I started pranking people and, you know, doing all kinds of silly stuff, you know, uh, because yeah. she she taught me to enjoy it in that sense and mm. not be so serious or mm. um, somebody who could anchor me and kind of bring me, you know, into my inner child and, and let my inner child come out to play. Um Mm. Also, she's dropped dead. You will drop dead when she's gorgeous. Oh my god! Wow. You don't. You, you so don't have to tell. You don't have to tell me. Her. You don't have to tell me. Have you seen her face card? <laughs> See, listen. After this interview, look at Lerato's face again. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I think more than anything, I love her mannerisms. I like the way she moves. I like the way she talks. Mm. I like it when she's mad. She knows that too. I like it when she's mad. Something about her when she's mad. It's, just, it's giving. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was kind of like. Can, I can relate to sense. that. And like, I had no plans of mine. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had no intentions of shipping with anybody in the house. I, I wanted to kind of like, you know, see if I could hop from one situation ship to the next, just, you know, on a friendly level. But mm. Lerato was just like a brick wall and I wasn't even trying to. So mm. that's how we, that's how we became. Mm. Yeah. You know what, Papa Ghost? Um, another accolade I want to give you um, in this conversation. And I said the same thing to Lerato when I had my conversation with her. I want to thank you both yeah. for not messing up the concept of having a romantic relationship on live TV. Because personally, I am traumatized yeah. by the many unnecessary shenanigans that we are being fed with every season of Big Brother. If it's not sex happening, yeah. I mean, hey, no shades of people that have been doing it. They are humans and they can do whatever they want to do. But yeah. I feel like there comes a time where you should give more and not just the usual same old, same old sex. And it's like the only thing yeah. you, you, you carry as content as a human being yeah. is just sex and that is it. But both of you came with an alliance, with a mental capacity to strategize, you know, to, to be creative. The things you both came up with in that house, it made me wonder if you guys were soulmates before in your yeah. previous lives. How did you guys come up with all of those? <laughs> 
How did you guys do it? The concepts to create content, to create entertainment, the pranks Lato was carrying out in the house, and the way you were not tying her from doing what she wanted to do. You guys allowed each other the space to exist as individuals and as a pair. Yeah. How were you able to achieve that in such a confined space? I think um, I think just to start off with Gloria, I have to say, Larato was probably the most inspirational person to me in the house. Um, the other housemates, mm. they were afraid to come and say to me, hey, dude, this thing you came up with is really cool. I'm enjoying it. I love that we get to do this on Fridays. I love that we came up with an idea of what we can do on other days when, you know, we're, we're idle. Um, mm. But Lerato was never afraid to come and say to me, uh, hey, babe, listen, this is really dope. I love that you're doing this. This is amazing. Mm. Keep doing it. Here's an idea if you want to expand on it. You know, so mm. she was very, she was very inspirational to me. And I think because Lerato is a very intelligent woman, but I'm attracted to intelligence more than anything mm. else. Yes, she is physically, aesthetically pleasing, but it was more her intelligence and the fact that, you know, we could meet on a level playing field when it came to conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. We 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 spent we spent a lot of time not strategizing, but going through our personal relationship issues because you know, um Lerato was not in a relationship for a long time before she decided to be on a relationship on national, international TV, whatever it is. Um, and I had been a year single, you know, she had to, because it was real between us, because it is real between us, we had to like mm -hmm. take time to like communicate and navigate through our relationship. And we found out very mm -hmm. early that as long as we, you know, table the discussion and give each other an opportunity to kind of air out our feelings about um, whatever it is we're going through. We can make it through anything. And we did mm -hmm. have, have some real... By the way, Larato and I would put on, like, we're going to have a little, little fight just off... Yeah. The breakfast and, and who says what in that direction so it was kind of like our way of gauging the housemates how they feel about our union you know where they stand and where they're at mentally and mm. it, oh, that paid off a lot that paid off mm. a lot because i got a lot of feedback about her she got a lot of feedback about me and we'd come back together and be like okay no that one once this that one once that you must look out for that one mm -hmm. you must look out for that one so it did kind of give us a bird's eye view of uh, of the house up until we left and actually we had a bird's eye view of the house. Um, <laughs> although it was very limited, I wanted more. I really wanted more. I wanted to see more. Yeah. But yeah. Um, your initial question was how how were we able to navigate? Yes, in such a confined space. A relationship yes. in that space. Yes. Communication. Communication. That's it. Like Absolutely. I'm like I, I'm a very emotional person. Um, I'm an emotional guy. I can sit and speak about how I feel. I don't think that it emasculates me in any way. I feel like mm -hmm. that is a, a very healthy stance to take as a human being, you know, being tuned with your emotions mm -hmm. and because because of that I feel like Sometimes it was a lot. Sometimes it was enough. And it really helped us to get through the hardest times that we needed to get through. Um, mm. But there definitely, more than anything, is love between her and I. It's love. Mm. And to find something like mm. that there was a saving grace for me. You know, it would mm. not be, it would not be, it would not be my journey the way that it was for Arata. And I don't think I would change anything about it. Except her getting evicted. That sucked. I was so, so angry at her. Mm. It's fine. But yeah. I guess, <laughs> I guess yeah. we'll get it. We saw that. We saw that. 
Okay, so as yeah. I as I mentioned before, you from my point of view, you both had a very beautiful, fascinating, interesting relationship that I had been looking forward to experiencing on a show like Big Brother. However, um, and sadly, the most of the, let's say some of the viewing population of the show, I feel like they sort of lacked on, they, they sort of lack understanding of how conflict resolution works in relationships. And so there were a lot of yeah. labels that was given to you in that relationship, which I would like for you to speak to. Yeah. All right. I mean, I can do several videos to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it, but because I am not the one that people watched on TV, yeah. it wouldn't make any difference. So people tagged you in that relationship as abusive, as arrogant, as oppressive, as controlling, because according to them, why must you and the Rato quarrel all the time? Why must you call out things that Lerato, you know, possibly did in the relationship? Or it could be that they got a skewed understanding of what happened. And, you know, sometimes because of how the camera works, right, we don't get to see things that happen sometimes from start to finish. So sometimes it could be that maybe the camera did not show us when the situation started between both of you, but what the camera is now showing is when Papa Ghost is reprimanding Lerato for maybe something she did, or maybe when Lerato is yeah. feeling that. Do you understand? So all of these indices involved, yeah. all of these labels about you in that relationship, you know, was birthed. So I would like for you to speak to that. So um, I I was raised by a man who is a Zulu man, very stern man, almost military in precision. But the way that my dad treats my mom or treated my mom was like he treated her like a queen. Mm. And in exchange, I saw my mother. Because my mother, is she's quite the hard rock. You know, I saw her softening mm. up and like it was that give it was that give and take that they have that kind of informs, you know, how I believe relationships generally should function. Um, so when Lerato and I started off, I told her, I was like, hey, listen, I, I was, was in a relationship about a year. I'm, I'm not entirely sure I want to get into one at all, let alone in this space. She was like, yeah, you know, I understand. I've also not been in a relationship in a very long time. You know, nothing serious, but we'll see. So I think from the beginning, from even before we started being together, like officially, there was communication about where we stand, who we are and what we want. And Lerato mm -hmm. was never at all confused about who I am. She knew from the beginning mm -hmm. that I'm a stern person. Um, she knew that I believe in communicating, not keeping secrets. Um, and also, like, if if we're together, we kind of need to function as a unit because mm -hmm. we're going to bear the brunt of whatever repercussions come together. There's a lot of things that mm -hmm. I did in the house that I suffered for as well, you know. <laughs> and as long as I knew that she was going to do it, I was okay. I was okay carrying that burden with her, you know. But if I didn't know, then it made me upset because I was like, you left me in the dark. You know, you just treated me like I'm just another housemate to you, you know? <laughs> so I think, I think, I think um, I was never afraid to sit her down and say, okay, listen here, baby girl, you have done A, B, and C. It's made me feel like this. And usually it depends on how somebody reacts that determines whether it's going to be a discussion or it's going to be a fight. Yeah. So if I come to you bearing my emotion, I'm like, Glory, listen, um, I really didn't like that whole technical thing that happened on your life the other day. And then you turn around mm. and say, yeah, it wasn't my fault. It was you and your device. That's, you see, now you're setting us up for a fight. Whereas if you say to me, yeah, you know, 
that was really misfortunate for us. But I'm pretty sure that mm. I think in the beginning, especially, Lerato wanted, well, she had not relinquished her power as somebody who is single and is now functioning in a unit. Um, and she would want to mm -hmm. unnecessarily, like, like unnecessarily create a stance or create a, a conversation that didn't have to happen. Sometimes all you have to say, say to somebody is, okay, cool, I understand. And I'll try my best to not operate in that manner. Or I'll, I'll do better next time. Like even if you mm. don't plan on it, you know, it's just, it's just, a, just a healthy way to communicate. Because somebody coming and bearing their feelings, you must understand that that's already taken them a lot of doing. You know, that's already taken them a lot of, like um i guess mental stretching like i've okay i've thought about this i'm going to tell this person that this particular action made me feel this way and then you get mm. there if the person is like resistant to your emotions and they want to tell you how they feel instead oh, like help me i'm actually here for help you're like a refuge for me and i feel like i'm being turned away at the gates so mm. I think that's why Lerato and I had clashes. I just was never, I'm a stern person. I know what I want. And I will tell a female, especially if we're involved romantically, that listen, this is what I can tolerate. This is what I cannot tolerate. And I think it's because I have that confidence because I'm just so present for my partners. I've always been that way. Mm. And I was so present for Lerato um, in the most intimate ways, um, in the most, emotional ways i was always there for her when she needed me um i think sometimes she might have been feeling like it wasn't enough but i mean that's mm -hmm. just part of being human like you can't be happy all the time so yeah. i think i think i did i think i did my best in terms of how i treated her maybe people perceived it in a different way they cannot mm -hmm. now dictate her experience to her as well and say yeah ghost is abusive i mean yeah if ghost was abusive i think it would have come out from her as well from her end yeah. i think it's just the way that we communicate we're too grown uh we understand each other very well mm -hmm. and we do not chop our words up when we communicate because also we don't want whatever it is we try to accomplish to be lost in translation we want it to land and we want it to be effective um mm -hmm. And we're trying now to, okay, well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah. Because, it, because when I had my conversation with her, I also asked her the same question. And she was kind of surprised, you see. And that's, that's what happens when you are in the house playing the game and people are out here watching you and giving their interpretations, right? She was quite surprised because according to her, yeah. some of the quarrels and the lover's spats that you both had some of them were planned even that major fight that happened in the garden mm. you guys just decided to pull something up you know mm. but there was just a lot yeah. of interpretations to read it was just very funny but anyways now let's move on to the fake eviction what was your initial yes. reaction <laughs> what was your initial reaction it's so funny. It's so funny because for the first time today, I saw a clip from that eviction, um, and you can see I'm there. I'm embracing Lerato, and then Lawrence says, mm -hmm. "And," and it's like I almost knew at that moment. I almost knew. I was like, "If she's going, wherever she's going, I'm going with her," because we're a set, <laughs> you know. Yeah. We're a salt and pepper, fork and knife. Wherever she's going, I'm going. And when he says my name, we both, both smiled at each other. You know, I, I, I just watched that, like, literally before this interview. I just saw that clip for the first time now. We both smiled at each other, and I grabbed her hand, and I was like, let's go, babe. You know, that was my mm -hmm. initial reaction. And at that point, I felt mm -hmm. like if this is it, we did what we could. We did what we should, mm. and I'm proud of both of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's how yeah. I felt. 
And I was happy. I was happy to walk out of those doors with her because I walked in through those doors with her on day one. You know, mm. it it wasn't the end of the journey, but it it certainly felt like it was it would be a fitting yeah end to our journey in the house, only to find yeah. out behind the door yeah that it's not <laughs> over. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. Do you know what happened to me here? When Lawrence made the announcement, I see, I went on Twitter and I typed, I said, this is the end of the show. Like, why would they remove the content of the show? <laughs> this is the end of the show. Yeah. And look, no, seriously, I, I you know what's funny? It was on that day I realized that a lot of people were actually enjoying what you and Leonardo were bringing to the show. Because people were going crazy, like, so what are we supposed to watch? What? Because I'm sorry to mention this, but at that point in time, we were fed up of the whole Jared, Liema, and Mpumi's triangle that was happening. We were overly yeah. fed because the cameras were most of the time on those people's relationship. And I was complaining. A bunch of people were also complaining. So it was more like... If it wasn't that, it was Lerato and mm -hmm. Papa Ghost drama and then Yolanda, right? You people were the ones shaking the house. So when Lawrence made that announcement, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not watching anymore. There's nothing to watch with the show anymore because this is the end. <laughs> I, I, I tweeted that because I'm like, I'm done. You yeah. know, but then look and behold, you guys were in the cabin and I'm like, okay, I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to watch. <laughs> you know, so it was a highlight. It was a highlight. I loved the twist. But here's a question for you now. For the very first time that season, right, your fellow housemates became one big happy family. They sat together in the conjoined yes. dining set. They said the Lord's prayers, held yes. hands together, and they broke bread yes. and ate steak and lamb chops and chakalaka. They ate food like never before. <laughs> I know. I know. Was, I saw. I saw. <laughs> what was your reaction when you saw all of that happen? I mean, you and Lerato, what were you guys thinking when you saw them rejoicing like that? I was, I, firstly, I was really shocked at how fake and pretentious they were being towards each other. Because <laughs> um, I always knew what was happening in the house. I used to tell Lerato, I was like, Lerato, as long as I know what's happening in this house, I'm good. So I always knew what's ha what was happening um, in the house. I always knew who was moving with who, who was creating alliances with who, um, yeah. who were they trying to get rid of, and all that kind of stuff. So with us being outside, there's one thing that they hadn't come to terms with yet. And it would hit them that very next day on the Monday. You know, when they had to face to face nominate yeah. each other. That's when reality struck. It, reality hit back. It hit home. Like, oh, shit. You know, for, since week yeah. one, I've been nominating Ghost and Lerato. Who am I going to nominate now? I've been doing exactly. playing Kumbaya with these people in the kitchen, holding hands, yeah. singing Glory Hallelujah for every meal. <laughs> now I have to be real. Now it's back to the grind. It's back to the chase for the two million. You know? Um, yeah. But I have towards each other. And it's not going to last. That's what I told myself. I was like, yes. it's not going to last. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. But, nice. I mean, we didn't get to see the live nominations. It was that that mm. when we were in the cabin, we didn't get to see the live nominations. I would have loved to see them. Um, mm. I did try kind of pick information out of people without um infringing Big Brother's rules. As you know, I sat with the yellow book yeah, many days yeah. reading the, <laughs> the rule book. Uh, because I was always looking for I was always looking for a way to Marsha without breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah. they were being fake, and it showed. By yeah. Tuesday evening, it was over. The whole kumbaya moment had died down. <laughs> And they never sat again with the tables conjoined. <laughs> now that was that was that was funny. That was that was funny as well. It was like you see, the I, I said it that 
The few things that production did right this season was that fake eviction, aside from many others I've mentioned before, the fake eviction was one of the few things they did right. And that face-to-face -face nominations, it was needed because a lot of us, the viewers, were sick and tired of how housemates were nominating. If they were nominating, at least your name will come out five times. Lerato's yeah. name will come out maybe four times or three times. Yolanda's yeah. name will come out all the time. So it was just three people, especially that were getting nominated. I'm like, like guys, open your eyes and see people around you. There are competition around you. So it was such a welcome yeah. development. But in the light of all of that, I'm sure that, I mean, permit me to assume that you were very much aware of the many things that were being said about you in the house the many sentiments that you know your fellow housemates carried about you in the house of course it's a competition so those sentiments are allowed but how did it feel watching them from the privacy of that cabin you were watching you were listening especially from people you considered friends and allies you know there was really there was young Papi, there yeah. was Z, who you had a very close friendship with. How did you feel watching these people, listening to them? Um, to be quite honest, uh, and if I went back harboring any of those emotions, I would have fumbled along the way in my game. And I would have lost a lot of, mm. I guess, the power that I had in the house, you mm. know? And like, I don't mean to say that in a, any kind of wrong way, but I did have power in the house. I did have, I did have pull in the house. And it wouldn't go if Ghost was not a part of it, if Ghost did not start it. So I knew that if I harbored those feelings um, and kind of destroyed those relationships, I would lose a lot of that. And essentially, mm would eventually lose my sanity because you know there's one thing about being human is you can be as introverted as you like basic human interaction mm. is a necessity absolutely and i told myself that i do need to i do need to kind of approach this situation with some level of amicability there are people that i told myself Especially Willie, I don't know if you if, if you guys saw the conversation I had with Willie in the laundry area. But I went yes. to him and I was like, Willie, yes. um everybody's been talking smack, including you. Where do you stand? And he was like, Yeah, he admits I was talking smack and this and this and that. And I was like, Okay, hey, cool. You don't have to explain mm -hmm. to me why you did what you did. I'm just glad that you're able yes. to own up. If we're able to move yes. on from here, I'm happy. I don't want to harbor any feelings. I don't want to keep it, you know in the in the frontal of my mental like oh people hate me people don't like me in the house i mean mm. i'm not there it's not a popularity contest to be quite honest mm. um it's we're there to compete we're there to compete for you know a grand prize that is very hard to navigate to because as much as you live your life in the house and some people were trying to please other people and try to create alliances um, others were just working hard and just being themselves. Mm -hmm. And you never know yeah. how that's received on the outside. So, very True. tricky, very tricky situation. And also watching my housemates talking, gave everybody because Mbumi said it to me at when Lawrence Oster, she said her piece. When I came back, mm -hmm. because she, she had the courage to say it in front of me, you know, and yes. she thought actually that by by me saying that Bumi, you're my next target, I meant that I was yes. going to terrorize her. No, I just thought that <laughs> I just thought that Bumi was stuck in a boring line, and yes. she was kind of losing herself in it. She was losing the talented person the fun-loving person, the person that made connections with people in that. And she would even admit it herself that mm -hmm. she was not happy about me coming back. But in the long run, she would have not probably gone as far as she did had I not True. come back. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, and and you see, and you see, yeah, there was something that was very poignant when you and Legato returned, right? Um, okay, okay, I feel like I'm fast forwarding right now. Okay, before I ask that question, let me first of all ask you, right? How was it? What was the shift like moving from that major confined space, right, with these colorful personalities, right? Onto moving to a smaller confined space with Lerato, whom you were just getting to know and learn and understand. And you guys will have your high moments, your low moments, your tensioned moments. You can't even go outside. It was even worse than the actual mansion. What was the state of your mental health at that point in time? How did you feel? I, I, I heard Lerato say at some point in the house that I think she wanted to leave. I think it was when you both, you both were having conversations. How was that phase for you both, even you especially? <clears throat> so the time in the cabin was literally a roller coaster. In some instances, it felt like an eternity. In some instances, mm. it feels like it was too short because it was such a roller coaster. You know, mm. going in there, initially, we understood that we have an opportunity, a rare opportunity in the game. Um, and we understood that Big Brother wants something from us. And mm. to be in that position... You kind of really need to know that, okay, cool. There's something that you're doing that's mm -hmm. right, you know? Mm -hmm. So we start discussing strategy and, you know, we, we won't always see eye to eye, her and I. She's more of a physical person. I'm more playing the mental game. Um, yeah. So there was those ups and downs, you know, definitely there was those ups and downs. And I th think we had a fight, we made up, we had a fight and everything. But also being in that cabin taught us that we don't have to entertain every single time. Some things you just kind of let them fizzle out. I've never been good at that. Rato taught me how to do that. Mm. Like, you know, some things you feel a certain way. But trust me, 10 minutes from now, it won't be more. So don't even pursue it. Don't go down that road and find yourself yeah. harboring feelings of negativity towards a situation because you entertained it. Yes. So I think we grew a lot as a couple in the roller coaster. Mm. By the time we left the house, well, sorry, uh, yes, there is a point where she was throwing her toys and she was like, she wants to go. And I remember saying this to her. I don't know what she wanted me to say, but I remember also thinking it to myself, like, damn, bro, you coke. <laughs> I said to her, because she said she wanted to leave. She wanted out. I said to her, Lerato, I'm not going to lose you and lose this competition. That's for sure. And that was my stance. Mm. And that's what I left it at. Like, if you leave, mm. I'm going to go back into that. And I'm going to go hard. I'm not going to lose both. Mm. So I think we had, we had quite a roller coaster. We have regained our strength. We have strategized. We have mm. reformulated the whole idea, you know. And also... That's what I said to Lavato at some point. I was like, hey, let them make their own urban legends about where we went and what we did. You know, don't give mm. them the information. Let them make it up themselves. Then it's more believable. If mm. you tell yourself something, you believe it more than if somebody tells you. So that's actually what was happening a lot um, in the house. And people were, you know, making up theories about it and all and like I really enjoyed that, mm. and the disappointment mm. that was very, very. That's, don't be boring. You guys are so boring, and I used to tell them, you guys can be so boring. 
you know. Mm. And eventually, I became boring too. I became a napping person also, <laughs> which I wasn't. By the, way. <laughs> by the ways, by the ways, it was really, it was really fun watching both of you brainstorm about content for entertainment you know on your return back to the house and it manifested yes. when you guys started yes. doing things you know the, the information you were giving to your fellow housemates which yeah. actually turned out useful because people that didn't used to do stuff before they started doing it i mean Pumi literally left the triangle and became a, um, a more empowered woman in the house liama started trying to sing in the kitchen yeah. from time yeah. to time you know Every yes. single person that you guys yes. gave a, 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 should I say, an X-ray, like a, an X-ray report about themselves, yeah. even though they were doubting and even conspiring amongst themselves on how to, you know, exclude you guys, they were literally taking your advice and they were putting it to work and it sort of worked for them. So kudos to you guys. You know, it, yeah. it, it went to um, validate what yeah. Lerato actually said on here you know that you in particular you were very selfless even though you were playing the game you were also very particular about the whole house coming together and entertaining the viewers and so all of those brainstorming you both yeah. did it was really entertaining at the end of the day for us the fashion um, was it the award show you guys come on yeah. that was genius that was genius how did you yeah. guys come up with that and what was the what was the reasoning behind that Um, well, as always, there's always the surface and the underbelly. Well, on the surface, it's it's a fun thing to do on a Friday because on a Friday we usually idle and there's not much activity after Friday night games. So let's get dressed up. Like, you know, people on the outside world, mm -hmm. let's get dressed up and let's let's meet up for a night with the stars, you know. Let's 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 feel mm -hmm. ourselves out as being stars and you know, I think it's something that people in the house had imagined walking red carpets and such. So for me, it was a matter of, it's an opportunity to kind of, you know, bring a brightness into the house, bring mm -hmm. some kind of celebratory energy into the house, just to re-energize, you know, people's, people's mm -hmm. perspective of their presence there. But at the same time, it was a way for me to deliver subtle messages to certain people, some good, some mm. bad. Mm. And I think I achieved that 100% because everybody Indeed. who received an award was either very happy about it or very upset about it. And <laughs> I mean, it's done now. I literally, I drew up all the categories myself and I decided myself who would be nominated and eventually who would win. But I mean, as yeah. much as it was such a, a unilateral process, I tried my best to be non-biased and try my best to kind of use the the platform to inspire people. You know, mm. like I was, I hoped that giving Yolanda the alcoholic award would make her think again about how she behaves. You know, and I'd had that conversation <laughs> with her many a times. Like Yolanda, you know, when alcohol is involved, you get a little bit wild. You know. You'd be like, yeah, but it's because I feel safe here. I'm like, yeah, I get it, but you know, you're still here with people, and you know, it gets out of hand. So that 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 was the purpose behind that. I mean, Valentine's Day as well, doing the um, oh man, <laughs> Valentine's Day, the surprise dance for the girls, and the little messages that we gave them. You know, yeah. it was just a matter of when when you're a person who cares about people, it's easy to think of stuff like that because in the back of my mind, I was like, what if one of, even one of these girls has never had a Valentine's Day, has never had anything special done for them, you know? It would make a difference to just her. And that's the, that, that was the motivation behind a lot of the things that we did. Even the... Mm the the podcast that we did with Willie on Fridays where we chilled and we, we had conversations. You know, initially mm -hmm. it was like sex talk with Willie and I was like, Willie, but the sex talk is a little bit that's all we talk about in the house, you know, in general. Yeah. Can we try and add more substance to this and more mm -hmm. interactive 
Also, maybe it might invite some other guests in the house who are not so keen on talking about sexual things of a sexual nature. And it did. I mean, yeah. there was one day where every single housemate came up to yes. North Cliff yeah. to come and be a part of the fragments as well in the house to see, like, you know, there is some sense of camaraderie and unity in here. It's just that mm -hmm. it, people would just much rather prefer to play their characters than to fall mm. in this whole idea of you know, we're here, we're stuck together and literally we are the whole world to each other, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, I mean, Papa goes, you, you see something, yeah? You see something. You know, when it comes to the Big Brother show, I think a portion of the viewing yeah. audience gets so carried away with what their own definition of drama is. They are so used to yeah. the fighting and shouting version of drama that they forget to understand that there's also something called subtle drama. And you, you really were blessed and you, know, you were just really blessed and skillful in creating that you see those your friday night gatherings people would do in the lounge or upstairs that you say oh tell this housemate what you think about them tell this one one good thing yeah. about see uh, those sessions yeah. were very yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. revealing you see it was very revealing especially to a lot of people that do not really have time to sit down all day and watch the show and then at night when you're back from yeah. work you know them sitting down to listen to those conversations it was like highlights I think it, <laughs> it was a highlight it became a very integral part of the days of the house because that was how some viewers got to even know the characters in the house a lot of viewers they just went by trends what was trending online and little little clips that they were seeing yeah. you know so once again i want to give you your flowers for yeah into consideration us Thank the you. viewers because most of the things you did and created were you know geared towards helping the comprehension of us viewers so thank you very much for all of those creative yeah. things that you introduced I, to the house actually yeah i actually said um to lawrence when i had my interview with him that you know it hit me so late that I was actually running a production company inside the house. <laughs> yeah, you were. I was actually running a production company. Yeah. And, I mean, no, but really. that for me was, those are the moments of sanity for me. And to provide entertainment within the entertainment, that for me was like, mm -hmm. and also I, I kind of understood that not everybody grasps the idea of being here yes be yourself live life and people will watch it but at the end of the day mm. you know you kind of do need to juggle you have to juggle you have to ride a unicycle you mm -hmm. have to be entertaining on some it's not the physical game it's the mental game and i enjoyed um getting into the psyche of my housemates and figuring mm -hmm. out what they were thinking. Sometimes they would get off information and they wouldn't realize that they've just given me a key to a question that I'd been asking myself maybe mm. four weeks before then. But um, mm. those sessions, like you're saying, they were very revealing, not just to the mm -hmm. audience, but to us as well in the house. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think there's one game we played where we drew names. I called it... Yeah. Battery charge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that was, was my favorite. For Mitch that was my favorite. I think it was that's, that's that thing. Mm -hmm. So working mechanisms like that into because it's like at the end of the day, we are people, we are living together, and we need to understand each mm -hmm. other on a certain level, you know, and of Other course. than tasks and all the challenges and stuff, we do need to have some kind of intimacy that we share because we sleep under yeah. one roof and I don't want you to come and strangle me while I'm sleeping. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well done, Ghost. Well done, Ghost. Yeah. That that was that was incredible. I that that battery charging episode mm -hmm. that was very explosive. Oh my god! Ah, Lerato sitting down and looking at mm. Yolanda saying what she said. And you know the funny mm. thing? It wasn't like you guys were shading anybody. It was actually what the viewers mm. were actually seeing that people were actually revealing about their fellow housemates, you know? Here's the reason I said that most of those exercises that okay, you yeah. introduced, it helped the a lot of viewers to comprehend what was actually happening in the house, you know? Because if not, people weren't going to do anything. They will just be gossiping and hiding and, you know, just just being under their shells. But really, you, you really went all yeah. out to, you know, yeah, thank you very much for that. Now, this particular return the return of the ghost back to the house i don't know if you know how that day was on the outside you probably couldn't have known but papa ghost you guys literally brought fire and brimstone <laughs> across all social media <laughs> platforms <laughs> did, did, yeah. are you familiar with the undertaker from wwl and um, wwf yes the undertaker from, from WWF. yes 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 see my daddy introduced me to wrestling as a child and ever since i've never looked back and the undertaker was my favorite entertainer or fighter whichever one they call it and every time he wants to make an appearance you see that yes. bell that rings dung, the smoke all the illusion that Ding. plays out see and, oh and, my and, god uh, Paul, Paul Bearer. Ah! oh my god See, when you and Lerato returned, I said, Papa Ghost, you need to have a fashion line for that black jacket you wore. You need to have a fashion line. Put your put your emblem on it. Put your <laughs> emblem. Put your logo. That was wild. I'm on See, it. the house was trembling. Oh, my God. The house was trembling. People were shaking. You could see some people almost pee their pants. It was wild. And I'm sure that even Big Brother will be jumping and saying, yes, yes, they are back. It was crazy. What do you think? Like, what was your what was your what was your interpretation of the reaction of your fellow housemates? How did you are you self? You self, your facial expression was mad. You were just looking at them like, hello, peasants, your daddy is back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um for me. <laughs> I knew, I knew that our coming back would have a huge impact on the dynamics in the house. Mm -hmm. um, but Lerato and I wanted to, wanted to add something. We wanted to add a fear factor. We yeah. wanted to make them scared as to what we knew and what we were going to do about it. Um, mm. And I think that's that's what we... That's what we wanted to project when we came back. I remember I told her I was for the for the first few minutes, I'm not gonna talk to anybody in my house. I'm gonna talk to maybe mm. one person and I'm gonna leave it at that. Mm. Um but I could tell, you know, and I wanted to I wanted to see because after I left, I noticed some guys just grew like ten times in confidence. And I was like, how yeah. was I really that heavy on their shoulders? Was I really that heavy on their shoulders that they couldn't even express themselves? Express themselves. <laughs> you um, were. So I remember, I remember going like past them and throwing, you know, little comments. Yeah. You know, and I could tell that they were really uneasy. I could oh tell God. that they were really uneasy and, you know, I still haven't seen the images of them having the meeting in the dressing room that night. Yes. You know, um, <laughs> I really need to, <laughs> oh I really need to see those images. No, it was an but, emergency um, I mean, meeting. From, <laughs> from that point, from that point, lines are drawn. I mean, if you're, you're, sorry. If your housemates can have a whole meeting about you, yeah. then you know 
lines have been drawn. You are public enemy yes. number one, you know. <laughs> and I I knew that as well. I knew that I would be coming back in as public enemy number one. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I kind of just told myself, you know, it doesn't matter. We keep moving. We work harder. We work mm. harder. That's it. That's all I told myself. I'm coming back and I'm going to work even harder. Um, there's one thing that can make you or break you in that house in terms of relationships. It's house maintenance. Mm. And that's what people are not, are not aware of for, and on the outside. The house needs to be cleaned every single day. Dishes yeah. need to be done. Cooking needs to be done. And mm. that can really ruin or make your relationships with people in the house came to house maintenance. I was never mm. a favorite. You know, mm. I was never liked by almost anybody because I would be like, guys, I've just come from the bathroom. Whoever cleaned the bathroom, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I would say to the girls, <laughs> like I would say it's our man, Glory, I would get so mad. Because I'm like, guys, this is our hygiene at stake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is our hygiene at stake. Guys, no one's going to come in here. They're just going to come in here and clean this house for us. You know? Mm. And eventually, sometimes I'd do it myself. I'd go and grab the toilets and whatever, even though I was not on duty in that area. Mm -hmm. But I remember I, 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 started, I started creating some kind of like resentment, especially towards the girls in the house, because I felt like they were lazier than the guys. And traditionally, mm -hmm. that's just not it, you know? And I kind of felt like they were doing it on purpose because they were seeing that the guys were so diligent in the house when it came to tasks mm -hmm. and house duties. So they were very relaxed in certain um, Yeah. But I think, I think, yeah, like going back to your question initially, I did tell myself mm. I'm going to work twice as hard. You know, mm. um, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm still here, but I'm going to work twice as hard because that's what I've been doing. I've been working my ass off. So I'm going to keep working hard. I'm going to keep pushing. And mm. I'm going to keep making people uncomfortable, I guess, with their laziness. Mm. Mm. And those were the results of me coming back to the house that was week six week five mm. mm -hmm. i think yeah i can't remember the week here yeah. yeah but let me let me yeah. ask you this question let me ask you this question because when you and lerato returned to the house i mean the tension was at its peak um the housemates were confused there was a lot there was a fluster of movement Thoughts flying here and there, speculations. Are they real housemates? Are they fake housemates? And then Jari, <laughs> Mr. Lover Boy, for the first time, decided to take responsibility <laughs> on his shoulders and call for a family meeting. Oh, don't allow them to do this. If they offend you, really, was it really that said if they offend you, come to us? Don't go to them. I said, are these people trying to create a household collective alliance? It doesn't really make sense, you know? So, in a way, it felt like they were trying to unify so as to fight against you and Lerato's whatever you are coming with from the outside because they weren't really sure, right? I mean, that was quite expected. Anybody would try mm -hmm. to prepare for whatever was to come, right? But yeah. for both of you yeah. now, and because I'm speaking to you now, not Lerato, how was it reintegrating back into that confined society? Now, remember, from the start of our conversation, I asked you the question about, you know, um, reintegrating back to society and coming back into the confined house. Now you yes, left yes, and yes, then yes, you are yes. back again. And it wasn't like when you guys were first introduced to the house. Now it's a proper war zone. This one, the daggers are out. You yeah. you have you've identified um, the enemies. The, yeah. So how was it? I'm going to be frank with this one, uh, Glory, but I think coming back into the house after the cabin is when I realized that my only real ally in the house is Lerato. And mm. that really, 
it was very it was very you know concerning for me it was very unsettling to think that mm. there is literally one person not necessarily that I can trust or I can get along with, but there's one person I can rely on in this house. There's mm. one person I know has my back and it was a very hard realization. So reintegrating into the house, I knew, I foresaw the fight with my keke coming. That's why you've never seen me reacting that way to anything. It's because mm. I saw it coming which is why I reacted the way I did. I was like, I felt, I was so upset. Like, how could you allow them to play you to this point where you don't see me, where you've lost connection with who we are and, you know, where our friendship comes from. Um, I, mm -hmm. I was hoping that it wouldn't get there, but I foresaw it. I did. I did foresee it coming. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It was hard. It was hard coming back to the house and carrying on. Mm. Um, for me, largely, like nothing had really happened with some people. And with some people, you know, we had established the boundaries of who we are and how we interact. So it was not easy. Mm. I can imagine. And let's let's narrow down to some of the conversations that were had whilst you were away and even when you returned. Um, the likes of Yolanda, Papi, Willie, Z, um, they they were of this opinion about you that you were bragging about the things you had. You claimed you have this amount of houses and cars and whatnot. But the first question I asked was, wasn't all of these things mentioned in a private conversation with someone that was yeah. close to Papa Ghost? How did it now yeah. become conversation yeah. of Papa Ghost bragging? So can you set the record straight and let people know how that information even came about so, in the first place? So how this happened, so how this happened is I'm having a conversation with Willie and Bobby. And mm. um, Bobby, I think particularly that day, he was feeling down about himself because I think Willie had mentioned that he drives, he has his own car, and I had to. And I was like to Bobby, you know, I know guys in their 20s that have a lot. Um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't discount yourself from that list. You can still do mm. it, you know. So early in your life, you can't do it. And I mentioned to him that, you know, I have my own house. Literally, mm. what I said, I have my own house. And I have two cars to my name, you know. Um, and mm. I actually remember mentioning, not fancy cars at all. I remember putting that there, like, not fancy cars at all. And mm -hmm. that was the conversation. It was actually me inspiring young Papi to, you know, believe in himself and believe that he can achieve all the things that he wants to achieve. And as time went by, I guess it became, it became adv advantageous to people to paint me in that way. Like, oh, I came to Big Brother and I'm rich and I don't need the money. I mean, that's pure idiocy, if you ask me, because nobody would put themselves through that, having those resources. You know, I came mm. there like any other contestant with my dreams mm. and my hopes. And I, I, I kind of feel like the housemates as a collective, including Yolanda and Willie, who I had, and Papi especially, who I had the conversation with initially, they really did a terrible thing by painting my image that way because some people will forever see me that way. And whether I'm yeah. out of the house or Big Brother's over, will always look at me that way. And I don't mm -hmm. think that they've done anything or done enough to ever rectify that and say, hey, it was yeah. a contagious in the game for us to paint this guy this way. You know? Mm -hmm. um, I think for the humble person that I am, it really did upset me when they spoke like that. But at the same time, I could never allow myself to let my emotions take over. You know? Um, mm -hmm. And I did a live with my mother 
earlier this week and or was it I did a live with my mother and she was talking about from her perspective raising me you know like it's not the guy yeah. now on TV talking it's my mother speaking and yes um and I I feel like they really did a lot of damage to my image permanently by perpetuating that idea that I said that I'm rich. I'm not rich. I'm not rich. Um, not in the not not not. I'm not rich in the financial sense. I'm rich in the spiritual sense, and that's the type of person that I am. You know, um, I believe that there is more to life than material. And for many years, my older brother has been telling me that I need to focus on making making money, building my repertoire as a business person and all that stuff. But I'm an artist. I love writing. I love to direct, <laughs> you know. Um, and I haven't made the riches that somebody of my capacity could have if they just stuck with school. Mm -hmm. I was a law student. If I had just stuck with school and gone to go do law, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I do feel like, I don't know. Once I have an opportunity to have those conversations with these people, they would want, I, I want to see what they would do about it now being out of the game because that image is following me outside the house. And as mm -hmm. much as I played mental games with people, I mm -hmm. never painted anybody in a negative light. I never painted anybody mm -hmm. in a way that would be to their detriment forever. Well, I don't think I mm -hmm. did. Maybe I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was really sad. And as you rightly mentioned, it became a very ugly narrative that I was sick of because I literally had to write a very, was it a long piece on Twitter? You know, like, is it a crime for someone to be self-aware? Is it a crime for someone to be an achiever? I mean, at what age exactly is it right for someone to have an achievement and be able to speak about it, you know? And it was also very ridiculous to me that you had a conversation with people you perceived as, you know, friends or allies in the house, in a house where there's no internet, no television, no other source of entertainment other than the faces that you see. So conversations needed to be had and you people had conversations and they took the information that you shared with them to play the game. And I felt like, okay, fine, fair enough. It was a game, 2 million was at stake. They did what they had to do. But how about clearing the air afterwards that, okay, this person did not actually brag about these yeah. things. These things were just said in conversations. Why be quiet about it? Because you see that, converse, that narrative about Papa Ghost is privileged, his Andale in Kobe, his brother, oh, blah, 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 blah. It was so big on the outside. And yeah. it was really sad that the people that were even eating up that narrative, you could just tell that they had a miserable mindset, very myopic mindset. Because yeah. you people were having conversations yeah. that we were watching on TV. If you weren't on TV, nobody would have heard that conversation in the first place. And it wasn't like you people were gathered in yeah. the lounge and you picked up your microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, look at me. I have two cars. No. You were having <laughs> a private conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's the thing with the mindset yeah. of some of the people that actually watch this show. The interpretations they give, it's really sad. But the thing is, have you had conversation with those people like outside the house now, you know, so that they can in their own way clear the air about the negative perceptions they created of I, you? I think I'm I'm kind of just waiting for the dust to settle. Um because this is something, a stereotype that will follow me. And I think it takes away a lot from you know, how hard my parents worked, it takes away from how hard my brother works. A lot of people might mm. not know this, but we, I I don't think I come from a privileged background. Uh, I come from a background of hard workers and mm -hmm. nothing ever fell into our laps. 
you know, everything that we ever earned was by the sweat of our brow. Um, and I feel like it takes away, it really does take away from how hurt, how, how hard my brother works. Um, mm. Especially my brother. Like, that man mm. works really hard. He works every single day of the week, you know, to ensure mm. that his kids um, and our family, you know, we, we have what we need. Um, mm. And I feel like, yes, you're right. At this point, being out of the house, maybe people should come out and just clear the air. But at the same time, I don't want to mm. be the one to go and be like, hey, you should clear the air about this. I think people should be responsible enough to understand yeah. that if you've done something and it's wrong, you should rectify it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a difference between the game and people's actual reputation in real life. But I, I yeah. totally agree with you. You should be responsible enough to, you know, do whatever. Now, this one, Papa Ghost, I've told you about how you look in personality, not physically, but in personality. You come off as a very, very strong person. You're very strong. You're very grounded. Your emotions are well put together. Your EQ um, level, IQ level, very solid. And thus, it makes people feel like you're not vulnerable enough. It makes people feel like you're not relatable enough because you're not you're not crying and wailing on live TV. You are not beating the wall. You are not beating people up. You are not in a shouting spree. You are not doing Taekwondo to prove that, oh my God, I can be human too. You have this elevated level of handling stress, of handling loneliness and confinement. And so I looked at your life in Big Brother's house and it dawned on me that of all the 23 housemates, you are actually the only housemates that lived three different lives in that house. You know, the first one is you getting into that mansion, living with how many people, 23 or 22 other people and interacting with them and all whatnot. The second um, phase for you was living in a smaller confined space with Lerato. That was another experience entirely because there was no guarding for you to go for fresh air. And then there was coming back into the house and losing your better half to an untimely eviction. Papa Ghost, please, did you use yeah. fire and brimstone to put together your mental health? Because it seems like your mental health is very <laughs> strong, man. <laughs> how did you deal? See, tell us, how did those levels break you down completely and you were able to hold yourself without having a melting pot? So I believe, um, I believe that whatever challenges life throws at you, you have a second to think about it, but you have to decide if you're going to dive in or if you're going to hesitate. And usually, mm. if you spend a moment hesitating, you might miss that ride. You might miss that opportunity to catch the right emotional wave. For me, mm. I think uh, I, I, I definitely told myself before going into the house that um, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to open myself up to people and to, to their stories and who they are and their dreams um, but at the same time I told myself that I'm not going to maintain negativity in my space and unnecessary drama because mm. why why should I why should I really because that's that's how you that's that's self-inflicted trauma Shouting at somebody and having them shout back at you and self inflict the trauma. So, I think initially, mm. with the whole full complement of the house, um, I just told myself, I'll be who I am, I'll do what I want or what I have to. And if anybody has a problem, they can call me aside and come chat with me about it. If not, they can blurt it out in front of everybody, but they're not going to get a reaction out of me. They're not going to get any kind of entertainment or, mm. you know, reaction. Um, that's the first part of my life. The second one is being confined with Barato. That was probably the most testing. 
but I even came out of that mm -hmm. even better, you know, because I had a deeper sense of connection with her, you know, my games mate, my partner in crime. Mm -hmm. um, we, we came out of there stronger and we had much more of an aligned uh, vision. Initially, I would always be trying to stop the rato. The rato is not Rato, please don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't pour oil <laughs> in her shoes. Don't, yeah. don't do that. Like, please, don't hide people's clothes. Don't look. look Biggie had agents in the house hiding yeah. things. Look, the rato was doing twice their work. And like it was so yes. great at the time when there was this agents because she was just like no one's gonna know the difference, you know. Yes. Um. So it really got us to like align and um. It gave us the time to align and like kind of create a single vision, and that was a lot of mm. it, it was a lot of fun coming out of the house, and I think the housemates could sense it as well that okay these people have been somewhere together and they are back strong and hmm. then when Lerato left when Lerato left she left at the worst possible time because yeah. the one of the only reasons I wanted to move to house besides the immunity was so that we could share the big bedroom upstairs and yeah. we had so many plans of how we would terrorize the house from up there <laughs> And when she yeah. left, I just I didn't even want to go there. I don't think you guys ever even saw me up there. Um, yeah, we didn't. I didn't want to go there. And coming into the next week, I was still feeling very lonely because she threw the dagger at me. And some people yeah. understood it. I didn't understand it. <laughs> I was like, Lerato is an intentional person. He does things directly. <laughs> so if she's throwing the dagger at me, that means she means for it to land on me, not to send some kind of coded message. <laughs> you know, had she thrown the dagger, had she thrown the dagger at anybody else in the house, I would have turned up a person because I would have been like, okay, this is Lorato's final wishes. She wants me to turn up on this person. And I would have yeah. turned up on them like 24 seven. And I've got this yeah. great ability of not. I don't need sleep. I can I can be awake for forty eight hours, sleep for four, be awake for another forty eight hours, and still be functional. Yeah. So I was literally in the last. I was going to be a menace. But she kind of she kind of kind of broke my spirit when she hit me with the dagger. But you know she was doing you a yeah, favor. Yeah, she was doing me dagger. a favor. Yeah. 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 Look, I don't. She need was to sound cocky about it, but I don't need a country. I don't need a clown suit to get screen time. I do not. I I do not need a clown suit to get screen time. I've found many different ways in the house to get screen time without a clown suit. The clown suit was just for me, especially because it came from her. I was kept trying to interpret what it means. Why a clown suit? Why juggling? You know, it's it, it really <laughs> occupied a lot of my mental space, and I didn't need that. I really didn't need that. I'll stand by my word. <laughs> nah, that was funny. That was funny. At some point, we were feeling sorry for you because it felt like you were so confused about the dagger. Like you were wondering, is she breaking up with me? Did she see something, or did she? Yeah. Oh my God, we were feeling so sorry for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Now we are moving on to a very, very, you know important phase of this conversation because um this part was a very integral part of your journey in big brother's house and this is the this is the conversation about the rivalries that were specific about you the entire season mm -hmm. now there was mac jr there was yolanda and then towards the end there was well, makeke yeah so we're going to begin with yes. mac jr to tell you the truth, Papa Ghost, as a viewer, if you ask me, if I'm having a conversation with someone and the person asks me, oh, what did Papa Ghost ever do to my junior? My answer remains the same, that 
I don't know because I did not see anything that it did. But now you are the one that lived that life in that house. So I want to ask you, please, what did you ever do to Mac Jr.? Like, was there anything you did to Mac Jr. that we are not aware of? What What is it? I think I think you can rewind back to the Monday morning after the first eviction show. I had a conversation with Mac Jr. outside. I called him outside and I said to him, Mac Jr., Lawrence is saying you're speaking about me in the house. Personally, on a man to man basis, I don't appreciate that. If you've got something to say, feel free. Call me and talk to me because I'm not going to grow if you're gossiping about me. As opposed to if you mm. call me aside and you say, listen here, dude, it's like this A, B, and C. And, you know, it seemed like we were on the same page. And it, it kind of fizzled out after that. It didn't really even communicate. That's the only conversation we ever really had, him and I. And it's a conversation that I initiate. Um, I think. Fahima being a disruptor uh, kind of played him towards me because she could obviously tell that that's where the, the that's where the energy is, you know. Mm. If you're gonna pick on anybody, if you're about to fight with anybody, if you're gonna create a rivalry with anybody, it won't make sense unless it's that guy. So I feel like mm. she being emotionally attached to him kind of set him up to kind of be my rival, even though, to be quite honest, I have no beef with Mac Jr. If anything, um, I, I, I kind of feel like maybe he didn't have to like show such an ugly side of himself to, to kind of gain attention or whatever. I don't think that's who he really is. Um, but then again, you always mentioned that we're in a house, we're playing a game. Um, but there's, there's, I have no beef with Mac Jr. I never had any beef with Mac Jr. I'm pretty sure you could tell, like, wherever I was in charge, I would move in a very non biased way. I didn't, I was like, mm. I hate the guy. <sighs> no, I don't. Even in my diary sessions, <laughs> when I could have said it, I don't. I don't hate the guy. I have mm. nothing against him. You know, and I said this in my interview mm. with Lawrence, Mac Jr. saw a more mature, more refined version of himself. And he kind of felt like he, he wants to bring himself closer in whatever way. He just picked the wrong way to do it. Mm. Mm. I mean, frankly yeah. speaking, there, there's no lie in that. If I had the, the opportunity to have a conversation with Mac Jr. today, I will, I will ask him the same question because what we, okay, let me say me, what I heard and also watched as a viewer, you know, based on what the camera showed us was the fact that just like the rest of the house, he did not like your audacity. He did not like your confidence. He, he did not like the fact that you knew you had the knowledge, you had the expertise, you know, and he did not close his mouth from saying that he said it he did not like it you know and also as you rightly said he saw like a more elevated version of himself because he actually thought he was the smartest guy in the room but then he met someone that was like you know up there you know and it became a problem the only problem was he took his extreme and he felt like because he saw that okay the idea of a male rivalry could be a juicy story like this season so it was like he stuck to eat and it played to his advantage in a way right yeah. but why do you think yeah he never wanted a resolution because you made several attempts you made several attempts during wager task and off wager tax periods you made attempts to reconcile but he felt like he did not want the resolution so why do you think that was for him because um, if if there is a resolution, now looking at it in retrospect, because if there is a resolution, Mac Jr. becomes my son. And he comes under my tutelage. And I will school him in the ways of how a man would behave. But if there is no resolution, he remains the 
guy who's a who's a who's a opposing oppression, you know. So I think yeah. for him, he chose <laughs> he chose to remain enemies with me mm-hmm. because it benefited him to yeah. to 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 be the one standing up against me. I mean, I heard a lot of people say that um, a lot of the Mac Junior vote was not a Mac Junior vote; it was an anti ghost vote. And I was yes. just like, "Whoa, Jesus! Maybe yeah. they should pay me for being on the show." Just <laughs> you know, not for really. You deserve maybe, that check, my I man. You deserve that check. Maybe, <laughs> now you, you deserve I think that I did check. More than you I deserve it. I yeah. Yeah. But um, for, I yeah, mean, I think for him, maintain. Main, yeah, maintain this enemy complex and yeah for him it was maintain the enemy complex and you know i maintain my position as being at the anti the anti ghost you know um but i mean anybody mm. who with two eyes and half a brain could tell you that i'm a really compassionate person i cared about people in the house um i was no drama i don't dwell in negativity anybody with two eyes even one eye and half a brain could tell you that um, if you are not falling into the rhetoric of ghost is this and ghost is that, if you're not falling in the propaganda, then you know, um, then you know who I am, you know what I'm about. Uh, even himself, you know, I think, I think he's a very bright person and he's got, he's very talented naturally. Um, mm-hmm. I just hope that, like I said in my final speech, it is the way that it is meant to be. Uh, and I just hope that he pursues whatever you know discoveries he made in the house. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one one particular scene I I must mention was that confrontation. It was like he successfully played a revised psychology on the viewers because you know he was the one doing the antagonizing yeah. but he kept on screaming don't antagonize me saying, don't and antagonize like, me yeah yeah he was doing the antagonizing he was the one that was just basically doing the antagonizing but he was the one saying don't antagonize me don't antagonize. and people were like yes yes go for papa go I'm like oh my god <laughs> yeah i think i think i think this goes this goes back to you know classically Classically, the characters that we see in reality TV formats, whether it be on Idols, Big Brother, whatever it is, you know, people generally do not gravitate towards the well-spoken person who's well-traveled and doesn't speak of his struggles in life. Not that I've not had struggles in my life. I have. I just choose not to speak about it. I view my struggles as triumphs. I've made it past that part of my life. And I am where I am. I should acknowledge that and be grateful. So I think that character is not the favorite of the viewers, you know, because it's like, yeah, this guy knows things. He knows it all. He comes from this kind Mm. of background. So like, I was aware of that. I knew that that was going to be risky territory for me, but I took it because I was like, I'll never, I'll never disgrace my mom or my family and say, I go to sleep without eating. When I know very mm-hmm. well that I've not gone a day in my life, but you know, um, mm-hmm. but it's a risk that I took. Uh, I'm I'm proud of myself for taking that stance. I I could have chosen to be anybody else. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I could have chosen to be my sad stories, but I chose to be my victories in my life, and mm-hmm. I chose to be the best version of myself. And mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, kudos for that because it was the way you you were able to keep your hands to yourself. That situation could have easily gone south. You know, the way he was all up in your face, that was highly provocative, very, very provocative. And that was also yeah. golden in a way. But I don't know how you do it, man. Yeah. I mean, see, God bless your mother. Your mother raised you well. It was the way you kept your hands yeah. to yourself your tone of voice remained normal. You did not even increase or amplify, you know, your pitch. You were, um, dude, you know what? I didn't, what, I did not what, even what insult him. I mean, I've gone back to that. 
I didn't even insult him. I mean, he was saying the most insulting things um. and <laughs> using very vulgar language, which I, I mean, I always yeah. say if you're using vulgar language. Yeah. <laughs> you're being it intentional was, it was, it was in how you're trying to prod somebody. But I don't yeah. even think I insulted him back. Like, I, I remember thinking to myself, I can see this guy. He's jumping up and down in front of me. And I mean, if it were to come down to it in the real world, um, I still wouldn't fight him. But maybe I would mm. share some words with him of encouragement for him to want to really fight me. <laughs> but I chose, yeah, I chose was... not to. I chose to just, you know, I chose to just yeah. let him jump up and down. I, I honestly mm. thought that people in the house would start to see who he really is or what he's capable of. But things in the the house don't last. They don't last yeah. that long. I mean, he tried to sabotage mm -hmm. us in three, uh, with, the, with the wager, which is why I nominated him. It was the first time I could nominate him when we did face-to-face -face nominations mm -hmm. in the bias, ever since he did that. Yeah. And I remember bringing that up. I was like, I've had a bone to pick. I've had a gripe with him since week three of the task when he tried to sabotage us. That's why I nominated him that week. Yeah. Um, but people in the house forget, you know? It's like, they get brainwashed overnight. Yeah, I mean, it was just very glaring to see. Anyways, we're not here for them. But 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 here's the question. Yeah. Um, I know that you are very open-minded. You know, you're very, and that's one thing I really admire about you. Um, the fact that despite all the toxicity and rivalries in the house, you are able to work with anybody. For you, the work has to be done. And if anybody wants to stick around and do kumbaya, it's fine. You know, so you being who yeah. you are, is there, is there any hope for an outside reconciliation with Mac Junior if the opportunity presents itself? Um, to be quite honest, I'm going to put this to you. Mac Junior owes me an apology for being rude to me for no reason. And he owes me that apology. And he's a man, and he knows that uh, if if he ever did, would not make it a a, a, a matter of public interest to be between him and I. But as far as reconciliation mm -hmm. is concerned, I never had a relationship with my junior in the first. Weird for him to build a relationship with him outside the house, you know. But I do believe that if he's if he is man enough, he will come up to me and he'll hit me up like, "Yo, bro, I was just playing the game." I apologize for saying what I said. You know, that that would be yeah. me moving on from there. I mean, we don't have anything to talk about. We didn't mm. create a relationship. Makeke and I are different on the other hand. We are friends. Yes. You know, we created a relationship while we were in the house. We we discussed mm. so many different things and hopes and dreams that we share together. You know, um, mm. but if the opportunity arose for me to work with Mac Jr., I would work with him definitely. I don't hold anything yeah. against him at all. I mean, I totally stand with you on that because, hey, whilst you guys were in the house, there were a lot of people that didn't even understand the meaning of maturity, saying that, oh, Papa Go should have been the bigger person. And I'm like, what exactly is the definition of being the bigger person, you know? And I think in that regard, you actually yeah. tried a lot of times, you know, always making the move for reconciliation. That was you being the bigger person. I don't think there's any other definition than that, you know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. outside the house, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then, I mean, to your tent, to Israel. Now, moving on to the next person, Yolanda. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I found you and Yolanda's rivalry quite entertaining because she was like a bone in your neck. And you too, you had a time, you know. And there was also Lerato in the mix, you know. And she was on about this very interesting story about she likes you and she notices that you like her too. And I was kind of confused because I'm like, ah, Yolanda, did Papa Ghost ever tell you that he likes you? So it was kind of entertaining. I'm not going to lie. You know, but what do you think was the bone of contention between, okay, from Yolanda towards you? Because it was actually from Yolanda towards you. So what, what do you think was the bone of contention? 
Um, so Yolanda's strategy was quite obvious. If you watch the show, mm-hmm. you'd be able to tell. Her strategy was to be yeah. the loudest person and to irritate everybody and to be unapologetic. Um, and mm. it's like those intentions were brewing on the one side of town and my intentions were brewing on the other side of town. I was like, I'm not going to put up with bullies in the house. I'm not going to put up with people bullying other kids. And Yolanda, people were afraid of her in the house. Nobody would tell her, Yolanda, you're making noise. Yolanda, we're going to sleep. Yolanda, please don't do that. Yolanda, please close the fridge. Yolanda, you've left the iron on. Yolanda, please wash the dishes. Yolanda, they were afraid. Yes. She she soon realized that, um, she soon realized that I was not afraid and I was going to confront her about it. And mm. she kind of started to make it a game. Mm. She kind of started to make it a game. And she would literally trigger me on purpose. And I, mm-hmm. I, I guarantee you this, 80% of the time, she failed. She'll tell you, 80% <laughs> of the time. And I tried to annoy me, she tried to do something to irritate me. And I would just completely ignore her. Like completely ignore her. But Whoa. sometimes she would get it right and she would get a reaction, yeah. out of it, you know. And um, she, she, she definitely used that as a mechanism. Much like I feel like my junior did, he realized, okay, this is one of the strongest players in the house. It's one of the loudest voices mm-hmm. in the house. Um, let me play against him and see, you know, what that gets me. Mm. So yeah, I was I was unfortunate. Actually, I was the punching bag. I was very shocked to come out and find out that I'm the I'm the villain of the show. I was like, what <laughs> shows have you people watched where <laughs> I could possibly be a villain? <laughs> like I was being bullied and antagonized and all kinds of things yeah. were done because people figured that you know there is some mm. kind of light that's revolving around this person, and mm. if we you know, jump into the foreground, we will get, we will get that. I mean, Papa Ghost, you, you, sh- let me, let me just tell you this for a fact. You shouldn't be surprised anymore about how the viewers even perceive you or maybe from one, any other season, people like you, because the truth is, um, and this is me speaking from experience now, people like you are not really liked like that on the show because most of the viewers actually love and worship people that they feel have a lot of insecurities people that they feel are very emotional people that they feel are being real in quotes mark the quotes that i used now people that they feel are being real people that they feel are relatable. If they feel like you are too exposed or you are too intelligent or you are too knowledgeable or you are too confident, it becomes a problem for them. Because most of the viewers, and I'm sorry to say this, but this is a fact, most of the viewers of this Big Brother show are not mentally stable. They are not intelligent like that. Most of them, your caliber of personality uh, are not the type that they come across every day. And I'm telling you because of how I've also experienced most of these people, the way they troll me as well. When they, when they ex- experience people like you on the show, it, the, the first thing they say is, you are too proud. You act like you know too much. Do you understand? So they yeah. box you up. What they wish they are and who they wish they were in their past lives or maybe in their future, they see that in you. And because they are not there yet, you become the villain of the season. So it's only a few percentage of the viewers that are able to match your intelligence and see you for who you truly are. And that's just, that's just it. That's just it. So I wasn't, I wasn't really surprised that a lot of people 
yeah. where the way they were towards you, right? So don't let it surprise you. And this yeah. happens every season. It happens every season, you know. But now, but still on I don't watch Big Brother, so I wouldn't know. You don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't. Okay, yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. Anyways, still on Yolanda, the very day that she broke shamed you, made a big deal out of calling you names, saying you were wearing cheap perfumes, cheap this and that, literally was calling out the materials you brought to the house and all whatnot. You maintained such a very high level of composure. How, how did you feel that day? How did you feel that day? Um, I feel I felt like she was <laughs> stripping layers down that were unnecessary, and I felt like it was one of those moments, like when Mac Junior came barking at me. Um, she did that to make people outside aware of that. I have designer shades. My robe is a designer robe. It's like 4K. My pajamas are like 4K. But that's nothing that I ever projected out onto the show. It's and like I remember saying this to her, I was like, Yolanda, to you, this is Ralph Lauren, this is Calvin Klein, this is Tom Ford. But to me, it's just clothes, you know? And I felt like I was being played. I was being played into being this spoiled, know-it-all um, person on the show. And like, I did feel hard done that day because I, yeah. I felt like, People, people are playing dirty. Yes. People are playing dirty. And one of the things that Big Brother mentioned to us when we came into the house is like, guys, what not, blah, blah, blah. But play a clean game. You know, play a clean game. And I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of the times I was thrown under the bus because of material things only to come out the mm -hmm. house and find out that I use an Android and they all have iPhones, <laughs> mm. you know? And I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, who's rich and fancy now type of thing. Um, but I think it was very easy to paint me as that person or to, to kind of bring that kind of attention to me because mm. I kind of, I fit the profile. So, yeah, I was really upset that day. But at the same time, I told myself, I'm not going to let Yolanda get to me. She keeps trying. I'm yeah. not going to let her get to me. Hmm. Oh, that's the hmm. day she called me a whore. Then... Very, very Sorry? <laughs> that's what the did you day say? she called me a horse. Yeah. And see, this brings me to the next, the next thing I want to say, right? So she called you a horse first. And then another time, you guys had that shoe episode. I mean, we're all aware that you had yeah. actually told her before to, to not put the shoes there because you had to clean that place and she deliberately put the shoes there just to get a reaction. And then you guys had the back and forth, back and forth. Quite frankly, that was so close. A lot of people were scared that that episode was going to result in a physical altercation because it seemed like it was headed that direction. But you now made light of the situation which was a huge relief for a lot of people, you know, because you did not get into a shouting spree or get physical. Instead, you were now doing the go fetch, go fetch. And that was when you, you know, were referring to her as a puppy or something. And people picked offense. Yes. So please, can you let people know again that there was an insult of you being a dog and a horse before that actual episode? Because it seems like people well, have selective amnesia. So what, what happened even had nothing to do with that other episode. And I keep explaining this to people. When you're in the house, nah, at some point you forget that you're a grown-up. And you, you start to behave like kids in preschool. So even when you're fighting, you, you fight like kids in preschool. <laughs> you know? Um, mm -hmm. So what happened was we started the throwing of stuff around. And then I don't know why Yolanda did this, but she barked at me. She did a ah! She did a little bark thing at me, and I was just like, "Yeah," you mm. know. 
that's why I started saying the things that I was saying. You know, I'm like, okay, happy, doggy, a young Dalmatian. Yeah. Yes, it is because she has a, a specific looking um, skin and whatever. But even when Yolanda and I were having that fight, she was laughing and I was laughing. You know, it, it was, was funny. At that point, at that point, it was no longer malicious, you know. But Yolanda yeah. had this way of taking those things and then delivering them yeah. back to her caucus as being, okay, Ghost has done this. It's time for us to retaliate and fight back, you know. Um, but for me, it was never, whenever I felt anybody was approaching me and they were being, um, they were violating me, I would ask them every single time, please get out of my personal space. Uh, yeah. Not that I would do anything to them. I just prefer them not to be in my personal space. Um, and I think, I think that day wasn't even one of those days. Like, we literally fought like preschool kids. That's like, yeah. Like, it just became an episode of preschool kids fighting. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And, you, and, you, and you know what? Do you know that that day, after you left and went downstairs, the camera zoomed in on Yolanda's face and she had a smile of contentment on her face. And it goes to mirror what you just said, yeah. that you guys were actually laughing. Yeah. So it wasn't malicious anymore. Yeah. It was just for entertainment. But it was so weird that people did not see up to that part. Because as usual, some people would get the like partial clips from social media. And that is where they would drive yes, yes. their narrative. You know, here's the reason I said that I found you and Yolanda's back and forth quite entertaining because there was something that you both would normally yeah. do. After the quarrels inside the house, it was like on Sunday after eviction, both of you would have drinks in your hands. You are outside, you are having conversations with Lerato. So it was like you guys were cool at the end of the day. It was like a healthy competition, yeah. but because Yolanda is very loud, you know, people would say, oh, Papa Ghost is the one provoking her, provoking her, provoking her. Was there really some sort of friendship there in the midst of all of that chaos? I mean, I said this to Yolanda, and I think it's the week that she left. She said something to me, and she said, yeah, but you don't like me. And I said, no, Yolanda. That's not true. It's not that I don't like you. I just don't like the things that you do. And I always wanted to be friends with Yolanda. I wanted to be friends with everybody in the house. You know, because when else are we ever going to get to experience something so fantastical? And to be in such an environment, um, yeah. it happens once. Why would you want to draw any negative memories out of it? So I did want to be friends with Yolanda. But Yolanda was adamant on sticking to her character of being yes. the, 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 the local erit. And she did. She did a great job. She's the one person that irritated me quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I, okay. I think to a certain extent, I learned how to navigate. Yeah. And then there was the last stroke that broke the camel's back that that declaration she made on that particular night i don't want to repeat it here it's not necessary yeah but that declaration she made that led to her disqualification it was sort of really heartwarming to to see that despite the fact that you were at the receiving end of that declaration you were still the first person that went to console her, to encourage her after she came out of the the diary room with Big Brother. You know, that, that was really that was really touching. What was that moment like for you? Were you scared for her? Were you feeling sorry for her? What was that moment like? Yeah, I'm um, Glory, I think it was a mixture of those feelings. I did absolutely feel sorry for her. Because I could tell, like, I'd not seen Yolanda being so shaken. I could tell that something, yeah. you know, big was coming. And I was scared for her as well. You know, I, I was never in the house with the mind state that 
you know, some whoever is my competition, I need to get rid of them. No, it was never like that. I just my nominations were based on how people were performing as being housemates and on tasks. Uh, hmm. But I did, I did feel very sorry for her. And I I I I wondered if they would ask me how I felt and if I thought she deserved to stay. I would have probably said yes and let it go by. But you know, Yolanda I'd given her this warning before. I said, Yolanda, your mouth is going to get you in trouble. And she didn't care. Yolanda's very like, ah, I don't care. You know? I mm. say what I want. This is Biggie's house. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I warned yeah. her on numerous occasions. Like, Yolanda, don't say stuff like that. I mean, I think some might have slipped through the cracks. But that, mm. psh, you know, her luck ran out on that one. And it was sad. It was sad to see such a a big character in the house going like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, quickly, let's move on to Makeke as the third person that, you know, was more like a friend turned foe. And now I hope you guys are back to being friends. You know, it was very mm -hmm. weird, the shift in your relationship in the house. One minute, it felt like Makeke was, you know, trying to remove himself from other housemates' opinion and perception about you. The next minute, it felt like he was buckling under the pressure. And then the next minute, it felt like he was trying to prove that he could actually stand up to you and talk back at you. I mean, where, how did you people's relationship turn south? Because it was quite confusing to me. Okay. Um, so I've plotted this out, and it starts when Lerato and I get it. Lerato and I get evicted, we come back. And by the time mm. we come back, Makeke has kind of like had to create a new alliance um, mm. and kind of do what he has to do to survive in the house. Cool, that's understood. Yeah. And we come back and then he's like, yo, everybody, F you, my friends are back, you know? But at the mm. same time, I could kind of sense that... Um, I could kind of sense that Keke, in the back of his mind, does not really trust us anymore. Because where do these people come from? Mm. Um, what do they know? What have they seen? Also, I have done wrong things while they were gone. Do they know about it? You know, so that was like the beginning of... Um, that was the beginning of... The... The rift? The disconnect with my Keke. Um, okay, moving forward. Yeah, moving forward, we're fine. We're kind of going on, going on. And I think the people that now he has formed relationships with keep planting the seed in his mind that, hey, Ghost is trying to control you. Ghost is dictating your game. Ghost is showing you, yeah. is sunning you, basically. You know? And I think it was never that way. I always saw Makeke as my equal. And I always saw him as a mm -hmm. brother, you know. And I always felt that just the two of us alone, we could survive in that house, you know. I felt that confident about our relationship. Um, yes. Then came the incident one day where he lashed out at me while we were doing groceries. And he said he yeah, wanted no. carrots. I said to him, okay, carrots come with basics, number one. Number two, there's carrots right now in the fridge. And they've been here all week and no one has used them. And yeah. I feel like that's when he's trying to now start you know, asserting yeah. himself. So we had a chat after that. We chopped it up and it was okay. I was like, okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool. But from there, I was already like, okay, cool. The fight with me and my keke is eminent. As long as these people keep putting this idea in his mind that I'm trying to control him or dictate his game, yeah. the fight is inevitable. And I was kind of not quite sure how and when but then I noticed the change in the relationship he was having with Mac Jr. And I was like, okay, cool. Now it makes sense. Mac Jr., who has now lost all his allies, needs somebody to help him carry his non-existent storyline, I guess. Carry on, please. Carry no, on. Left me, guys. No, I'm here. I'm here. Carry on. Carry on. 
Yeah, so I, <laughs> I feel like McJr extracted Makege because he wanted somebody to help him carry his storyline. He wanted somebody to help him like navigate the last couple of lonely days in the house. You know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it started doing that before Larato left. So when Larato left, I think whatever whatever was at play was doubled. Whether Makeke himself doubled his own pressure on himself, whether McJr put more foot on the gas with, you know, making Makeke feel very insecure around me, it happened. And I remember the day we had the fight. I was just like, I, I saw this coming a mile away. And I was so upset that he allowed people to play us against each other, you know. And mm. I told myself that I'll be fine. And I ejected myself from the relationship. But mm. I was like, actually, you know what? Let me talk to my kid because it's bigger than this game now. Because that was the only real fight I had with anybody in the house. The whole time I was there. Well, besides the right to mm. relationship dramas. <laughs> but like... And I reached out to him. And he ignored me. So I was like, okay, okay cool. Wow. I'll stay ejected from the relationship. And then came the day when... In week eight, Where I think we had the second fight. Yeah. And I'm talking about... I'm talking about the HOH challenge. I'm like, guys, you know, from yeah, the cross trends. So, <laughs> I was like, there's no way any of you can beat me at this, you know, <laughs> because we go to gym together every single day. And I look around mm. at you. I know who's good at what. I know who's got physical strength. I know who's got stamina, yes. who could run laps around that. I know who's mm-hmm. got the core strength. And at that point of the game, it was me. You know, and I and I I was very blatant. I wasn't afraid to say it. Like, oh man, yeah. I I would I would whip you guys right now if they line us up. You know, and I don't know why he took it the way he took it. Um, but I guess it's because of you know the different the different birdies that were chattering in the air and it kind of led him to believe that. I was belittling him and saying that I'm stronger than him as a person. Um, but I just did not appreciate, I didn't appreciate him pointing at me and raising his voice. I didn't like that at all. Especially because we have that rapport as gents. We're like, yo, dude, you're a gent, I'm a gent. Let's try and respect each other and however we. Yeah. So, yeah. That was it. And I think I mean, by that last weekend, yeah. we, we, we had already started making up. And I was just told him, I was like, yo, bro, whatever's mm. happened in this house, whatever happens on Sunday, it doesn't matter. You'll decide, you know, mm. what you want out of it. You know, before, before the weekend, when you guys had the core strength <laughs> situation, by the way, that was very, very... That was very funny and, I don't know, just ridiculous because I was doing a whole analysis about that whole episode. I'm like, Makeke could have simply asked for the meaning of core strength because it was obvious that he did not understand what core strength meant. So there was a problem of comprehension and there was a problem of listening to understand, right? That was that. But there was also the other aspect of, I felt like, he was probably trying to retaliate. Because if you cast your mind back to the previous week where you guys had had your first major, you know, altercation or confrontation, whatever, um, I felt, me personally, I felt like you threw the first attack. You know, when he was having that whole situation with Liema and Sinai in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, and you had gone to him and, and was telling him, why are you, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I kind of felt bad about that. Yeah. Was that something that had happened before then? Because I felt like you literally entered him like that, you know, unwarranted. So was there something that happened before that time that warranted that, you know, so, that reaction from you towards him? 
So, so Makeka is always getting looked into fights with people in the house, and he doesn't realize that people do that intentionally. They rope him into fights um, because I guess a fight with Makeka must be very entertaining from an outside perspective. People were calculating these things. Uh, I tried my best to always just forget about viewers and cameras and all that stuff. Um, but Makeke, through getting roped into fights, didn't, we would forget that he has two strikes and he would want to fight people on the level that they're on, which was mm. no likes. And mm. I watched many a times where the person who pretended to be his friend in the house, Mike Jr., would allow him to go into those situations because for him, it's mm. minus one problem. You know, for me, mm. Makeke getting into a fight with somebody, Makeke was having a fight with Liama. They were having a proper fight yeah. before then. Yes. Naya stepped in to try and meet. Naya got dragged into it too a little bit. And then Liama walked away. Liama mm -hmm. walked away. Snaya walked away. And he was still riled up. So when Snaya came back mm -hmm. into the kitchen, uh, Makeke started with Snaya. And I was like, Makeke, why are you starting with Snaya? Why are you fighting Snaya? You know? Because in my mind, I was like, just let it go. You know? Just let it go. It wasn't me trying to... Um, it wasn't me trying to start a fight with him. I didn't think that would go that way. Oh. There's many times I've heard KK while he was in the heat of battle with people for no reason. Jaid, else, I can count so many different fights that I literally would go and get him. Like, yo, dude, just walk away from this. It's not worth it. You know? Mm. Um, but I guess at that point in the game, there was... Yeah. So that was your that was your own way of sort of reminding him of his situation that he's just one strike away from getting disqualified, you know, and removing himself from that situation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. This question I want to uh, ask you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to say something? Go ahead. From the get go, Makeke was always my greatest competitor. If we had to put it down and make things clear and make it clean, a clean, proper race, Makeke was always my greatest competitor because he is real. He is real. He is who he is. And he brought that, you know. And I found him to be very easy to love. And I can mm. only imagine that the rest of the world felt the same way. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well said. Well said. All right. I want to ask you this question about Sinai. Now, no yeah. shades to Sinai whatsoever, but just based on what I observed about him in the house, he was one of those housemates that was greatly against your personality in the house. He, had, he always had stuff to say, especially with his allies, Taki and Mac Jr. At some point, he was cooking, as he always says. He was cooking with Mark Jr. on how he was going to nominate you and Lerato. He's always cooking up something on how to deal with you guys, right? I mean, it's part of the game, so no offense taken. But then, it was very interesting to see how you guys had a rapport in the final week. And it was like he shifted away from his initial friendship with mac jr and it was always in your company yeah. it was just very confusing especially the night when you brought on that game you know the battery charging telling people what they thought about each other yeah. that night Sinae and yeah Sinae and taki were having conversations and Sinae outrightly said that he wasn't going to join your game. He wasn't interested in anybody psychoanalyzing him, blah, blah, blah. And Taki said that he was going to sit there and watch and listen, but he wasn't going to participate. And Sinai said he wasn't going to even be there. He wasn't interested. But then, lo and behold, Sinai was right there in the lounge, 
watching and before we knew it he was participating and before we knew it like a faithful church member since he had gone back to his friend to go and give testimony session that oh praise the lord i am yes. glad i joined the session because they told me about my innermost it was so funny to see it was like this guy why are you so indecisive yeah. so the question here is yeah what do you think about sinai did you notice this double sides to him and the the connection you both had in the final week was that real at all so um in my final speech to Sinaya, i i have this show that i really love it's called avatar the last Airbender. that's what this tattoo is about um mm. and i think since i was younger i learned a lot from that show and i learned a lot about the different seasons and and not just the seasons of nature, but the seasons of people. Sinaye, mm -hmm. I compared to Prince Zuko. If you watch the show, you understand. Prince Zuko mm. is a guy who is the heir to the throne, but is eventually banished and must go out and accomplish an impossible mission. Sinaye is a guy that had that much conflict and that mm. bared that much burden. You know, and I think through the days, through the weeks, he slowly started to realize that he's not doing it for himself the way he was doing it. And I think his, his father's visit was really the main turn. I think that was when things really started to change for him. I mean, in how we interacted, things were already starting to change in the house. Mm. But like when his dad came, it, he really stuck by himself who he is and you know what he wants to become and um i think he grew so much in such a short space of time mm. and he even started to look he looked like a different guy he looked like this young vibrant dude you know because he mm -hmm. was embracing that side of himself and he was embracing the fact that he has his own journey to walk and no matter what mm -hmm. alliances he might have created in the past, that's not why he came there. Yes, they might help him that yeah. way he came, but at the end of the day, it's your life. You need to make your own choices. And mm -hmm. I do believe that from the first week, Sly and I knew we shared a lot in common, you know, in terms of we like the same music, we watch the same sports. You know, already that's enough for guys to be friends. Guys don't need much to be friends. But um he 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 fell on the other side of enemy lines, and um, mm. that kind of shaped our relationship up until that point where things started to change. And I, it mm. is genuine. It is genuine, I believe. And he he made he made so many things right with me. You know, he's a really mm. honest and genuine person. He made so many things mm. right with me. He admitted to so many things that he did that were wrong. He. You know, and I, I remember saying to him, Mahbra, there's no need to apologize. There's no need to be sorry about any of that. It's what you had to do mm. when you were there, you know. Just be, I'm, I'm grateful that you're accountable for your actions as a person. And, mm. you know, we laughed it off and we moved on. And like, I think to a certain extent, maybe both of us kind of wish we had done things differently in that regard and just, you know, been cool from the beginning. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I'm sorry I had to mention it because it was a it was a very high point for me, like a very major observation I had. And one thing is, I just couldn't really take it too serious because I always remind myself that at the end of the day, it's a game. So everybody has got to do what they have to do. All right. Uh, yeah. Now, this particular part of this conversation is very vital, all right? Your sister visited the house and it was a very significant visit. She came with a message. Yeah. Oh, by the way, tell your sister she is beautiful. I just could not stop gushing about her sweetness and how gorgeous. Yeah, she, she's gorgeous. I love how vibrant she is. She's at some point I was just hoping or wishing rather that she was an actual housemate because ah, 
the energy that day the vibe it was it was <laughs> nice. i loved it i loved it she, she's amazing she's amazing i i love her personality but anyways she came Thank to the house so came with a message yeah now the message she came with was a very strong message and I, it felt like she was actually telling you something about oh this is how people see you outside you know um people think you don't like yeah. women people think did you get the message did you get it yeah. okay was it shocking no for you? to be quite honest yeah it, it was it was shocking for me because the only times i've ever had words with the females in the house was during work hours and i consider work hours to be work hours like we work for one boss and he wants one thing out of us. And if you're not willing to pull your weight, if you're not willing to, to you know, do your bit, then somebody needs to, you know, call it in, call it out. But other than mm -hmm. that, in the living space, Jesus, I mean, I don't understand what people were watching. Like, I'm the one person who took care of the girls in the house. Yeah. Like, I am, I am. I really am. I don't know what people were watching. And, like, I'm not going to explain myself and say, uh, no, you should ask them. No, no. I don't feel the need to explain myself. I am a compassionate person. I'm very caring, especially to females. You know, I had been that way from the very first day I arrived in that house. Um, but, I mean, people were listening to a narrative. They weren't necessarily watching the show and seeing what I was doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so the message was very confusing. Yes. I was like, be nice to the girl. The first <laughs> thing I thought about was Yolanda. I was like, oh, really? she's no way. Yolanda's pushing my buttons every day. I didn't, I had no idea. I could not imagine that I had been painted as this abusive uncaring person you know i would yeah. have not i would have not for the life of me do that yeah i mean papa ghost one thing i'm going to tell you here right now is this what the message your sister came with right that wasn't your reality in the house as you rightly said people no. were riding yeah people were riding with a narrative and let me tell you where this narrative is coming from. It was actually coming from fanatics. All right. It was coming from fanatics who had yeah. a phase. And it's all part of the Big Brother seasons system, right? For every season, you know, in a fan base, there are those that are reasonable and there are those that are unreasonable. I call the unreasonable ones the fanatics. So what they do is they try to de campaign. The competition that their faith has in the house and they will go these people are ready to bring out the ugliest narrative just to remove you from the game or tarnish your image and that was what was happening at that point in time and it was just yeah. very it was very scary so your sister bringing that message into the house it i feel like your family just needed a way to let you know of the reality of what was happening on the outside. So it wasn't like you were actually being cruel or mean or whatever, whatever. They were just trying to let you know that, hey, this is what is actually being said on the outside, all right? So yeah. that was what that was. Yeah. Yeah. It really threw me off yeah. because yeah, the very same Yolanda, um, who I had all these fights with, would always, pro like she would always profess how I did this and I did that. How I'm so caring, how I'm so attentive. So for me, like that information would have thrown me off because it would have made me act out of character because I was within my And Even the one female in the house, you might think that I don't care about, would not treat in a nice way, is the one who would always profess that Papa Ghost is caring, Papa Ghost will do this he he's he's attentive as a guy and maybe that's where she thought um feelings came from but it's just who i am it's the way that i was raised you know to be to be mm. courteous to people and to serve people you know for as, as as far as your your capacity allows so ah 
to be quite mm-hmm. honest, um, not that I'm bored of that narrative and that message. It's just disappointing that that's what people choose. Because at the same time, they don't know my past. They don't know where I come from. They don't know mm-hmm. what kind of abuses I've lived with. And, you know, to just do that for the sake of a game, to paint me in that certain way and make me feel like that, it's very, I guess, insensitive, and people don't care at the end of the day. They just want to see their face winning. But fortunately, mm-hmm. I do have, you know, a loving and supportive family, loving and supportive friends, and yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I'll be okay. And I can imagine yeah, also, like, like, I'd be, I, I rejected Yolanda on the show. I think maybe three or four times, where she made advances at me. The one day they were physical and I rejected her because I felt like for her was, uh, it was, she was doing it for entertainment's sake. And I don't play with my emotions like that. You know, for mm. me, if we're getting involved, if it's getting intimate, it has to be real. And I don't feel like it was ever real with her. So, which is why I asked her the one day, I was like, Yolanda, if you really do like me, why don't you ever do it when you're sober? It's always when you're drunk that you want yeah. to approach me, that you want to kiss me, whatever, you know? Yeah. 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 We, we, we heard that conversation both from your side and her side as well. Yeah. But at this point, I would love for you to tell us a bit about your relationship with your mom, your love for her, your bond with her, because you were quite expressive about how connected you were to your mom you know so do you want to tell us and also tell us how your bond with your mother also impacted on how you relate with women in general yeah so um she first said i should greet you she appreciates (laughs) all the lovely things you said about her son (laughs) my Um, love to her as well (laughs) i have I'm pretty sure she's watching somewhere. <laughs> um, so my my relationship with my mom is double-sided. There's the one where I am her son and the one where I'm her friend. And mm-hmm. it served me so well in my life to be have such a a genuine and open relationship with my mom. It served me so well Mm. in life to experience the sensitivities of a woman. So up close and personal. Mm. She shared her life story with me, you know, about holding back. As you know, I'm 37. (laughs) I'm old enough to, you know, to bear witness to some of the things that a grown-up has been through. And I think through those conversations that I've had with her, and learning the sensitivities of a woman, and mm. also learning the tricks of a woman, has served me very well <laughs> in my life. And yeah, he's taught me the tricks of the trade. You know, um, I think I think that relationship and the the depth, the level of depth that we have our conversations, and how much we just it's it's. I drove in December, we drove from Johannesburg, we drove to the Transkei, we drove from the Transkei, we drove to KZN, you know, we were going to my mom's home, family home, in the Transkei, mm. Ikukui, and then from there we went to Wamashu, which is where her dad's house, and her mom's house was, um, in, in, in KZN. You know, all of that driving, my mother and I didn't listen to a single song in the car. Wow. We literally shared conversation. Wow. On all of that long trip. So that should kind of like, you know, inform you as to the depth of the relationship that we share. And she's always there to advise me. And I'm always coming to her with my problems and, you know, issues that I'm facing. And she's always given me a better understanding of who I am, you know, um, besides the keys about women and how they operate, she's given me, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of intel about who I am, you know, and somebody that has known Mm. you for longer than you've known yourself can definitely give you that kind of insight. And I really, 
I do appreciate her and I'm grateful for her teachings, you know, as far mm. as maintaining my resolve as a person and not falling into traps, um, yeah. not being a reactive person, not being a person who mm. holds grudges, you know, um, mm. and just being loving and caring and attentive of other people. I really get all of that from my mother. Mm. You know, I must, I must give your mom her flowers. Like, you know, before experiencing you on the Big Brother show, I had actually experienced um, your brother, Andy Lee, on Young, Famous, and really? African, the two seasons. Wow, okay. And yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> for everybody that watched my review of those two seasons, they know that I is my crush. I have a crazy crush on him. Oh my god! I am so oh my god! <laughs> no, I, I, I am. <laughs> I'm a sapiosexual, so I get easily attracted to men that has got yeah. this, you know. So when I watch him on yeah. the show and I listen to him talk, I'm like, mm, send him to me, send him to me, <laughs> you know, Big brother. And then, Big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I watched you 71 days. I did not even know that you both were related. I didn't even know it was your brother. It was when I would put out my analysis and people were like, oh, Glory, do you know that this is your crush's brother? I'm like, really? What? Life mm. is funny. You know, and then I started, yeah. I started listening closely to how you think. And I was I realized, oh my God, <laughs> you guys mm. are literally from one tree so i don't know what your mom did but she definitely raised some fine young men mentally Thank emotionally you so much, your Corey, mother wow. Did wow. Nah, for real your mother raised you guys Thank you. for real nah you you, so you people you people are just your sound you're mentally sound you're very sound and it's it's very hard to to experience people like that on live TV, you 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 people are sound. You people are very sound. Even your sister coming into the house, you know the way she passed on the message. It just it's like you people have this tact running in, running through your veins. <laughs> <laughs> you people are just very smart for real. Yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah. So best regards to your mom. Best regards to your mom. Now, this part. This is where so much glory. you're welcome. Yeah. So this is where we need to do a lot of enlightening. All right. It's about the viewer's perception of you. This season, you were one housemate. You that was you, that was Lerato. The perception of you both, it was, oh my God. It 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 went to show that people actually need a lot of enlightenment with these things. And I feel like these conversations are yeah. not had enough. If these conversations are had enough, then I think there will be a bit more comprehension, you know, for people. Now, viewers' yeah. perception, right, about you, it ranged from the perception of, being, of you being privileged and arrogant as against you just having your own lifestyle and being self-aware you would speak to that all right people need to understand the difference between being privileged arrogant and being self-aware and having a defined lifestyle yeah. there's also the perception of yeah. you being egoistic and overly you know overly confident people need to understand that there's a difference between being arrogant and egoistic and also being confident you know you you you, you speak to that yeah. there's also the perception of people perceiving your calmness to be you being mean and unrelatable people need to understand that the fact that you yeah. don't throw tantrums it does not mean that you are not vulnerable when the need arises or you're not relatable. So please speak to all of these yeah. negative perceptions about you. Okay. Um, I think I said this already earlier. Uh, I'm not rich. I'm not rich. I just, I'm a guy who, you know, can hustle his way through life. 
and I like nice things. <laughs> okay, I like I nice things, it. and I would sacrifice. I would sacrifice a meal for some nice things. Um, <laughs> so as far as me being privileged, I've never gone to a private school in my life. I used to be labeled as a private school kid in the house. I'm, I've never been to a private school in my life. I'm pretty sure all the kids from private schools were looking at each other, asking each other, like, did you go to your school? Did you go to your school? No, I did not. I went to a government school just get down the road from my house called Norcom Park High. That's where I graduated mm. in matric. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough, like I said, to come from a family of hard workers. Like, my little sister mm -hmm. works, my brother works, my mom works. Even though she's retired, she's still working. I work. And we, we we all believe in the same thing, that, you know, in life you should live well and you should reward yourself. Um, the one person who I could say was a bit over the top when it came to things was my father, my late father, possibly in 2017. And... Um, he was maybe the one who was extra. But other than that, mm -hmm. I think we're a bunch of humble people. And we're just doing what we feel is best for ourselves in our lives. Sorry to drag my family into this, but I feel like we're all the same. You know, mm -hmm. none of us look at material and see it as the be all and all of life. Um, mm -hmm. As far as arrogance is concerned, Watch the way the task presentations. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, really, like um, there's nothing that I've ever said that I cannot back up, and I don't think I would ever confidently say anything if I knew that I could back it up. In fact, I yeah. reserve my comments on a lot of things in the house because I just didn't know these people because I already knew that they had a certain perception of me and I just prefer to keep certain comments top. Lawrence asked me on the last show, Big Brother asked me also in my last direct session, what is the one thing I'll change? I wouldn't have held back because I mm -hmm. was holding back. I was holding back so much, so many opinions, so many different inputs that I had in different situations. I was holding back and mm -hmm. that was all in, you know, in the aid of peace. Because I believe in peace. I believe we we don't have to be dramatic to be entertaining. Mm. I think that's what another a lot of people misunderstood. Clearly, the show is Siamosha. Not necessarily that we're moshing ourselves or each other, but just in general, you know, be bold, be pretty, be mm -hmm. charismatic, you know, grab it and seize that moment and tell yourself that Absolutely. you know this is gonna this is gonna be history making and groundbreaking type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the last one? It was yeah, your calmness. People misinterpret it to mean oh. you are not relatable and that you're mean. I think uh, um, people are used to toxicity and they yeah. revel in toxicity and they they want people to always meet the aggressor on their level. And that's just not who I am. I won't meet you on your level. If you're mm. particularly aggressive in a certain situation, I understand that maybe you have a trauma reflex that is now taking over your body or some kind of def defense mechanism that you've now employed to try and navigate through a situation that you're finding difficulty in. I... I, I I don't even when I am upset, I prefer to breathe, take my time, think about it, formulate my thoughts, then come and speak to a person. Not shout, not throw a tantrum. That's that's childish. And I remember mm. once saying the housemates were childish, you yeah, are so much trouble. Oh, oh ghost. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well said. Well said, Papa Ghost. Anyways, we've talked enough about Big Brother and Zamzi Siamusha season. 
we want to know about your brand. I went through your Instagram page. By the way, guys, you totally need to go and follow Papa Ghost on Instagram, on Twitter. If he's on TikTok, follow him across all social media platforms. This man's swag is unbelievable. Yeah. So I went through your Instagram bio and I saw the star maker right and there is one yeah. personality here in nigeria that calls herself a star maker she's big she's a fashion uh -huh. designer really? well renowned she's big right so when i saw that i found it quite intriguing right and it got me interested in all of your projects so tell us about your past projects existing projects projects in the works what are your plans? What are you doing? We want to know much more about you. We want to consume your content. Anything you have in the pipeline, we want to know about it. Um, firstly, let me start with the name. Star Maker is actually a moniker that I earned from my friends, you know, over the years. They're like, dude, you've worked with artists, whether it be actors, whether it be musicians, whether it be presenters. And You've taken these people in their craft and you've brought them to the highest level, hmm. you know, and particularly a friend of mine, um, Stat, he, he named so many different people this one day. And I was just like, damn, I didn't even realize I was doing this, you know, and that's how I earned that moniker, Star Maker. Um, and I hmm. think someone might look at it and think it's cocky once again, uh, or somebody might look at it and see an opportunity. Um, somebody told me when I left the house that I should stop hiding in the shadows and I should show my face, I should show myself, I should own my accomplishments. Which I, mm. I don't know if you guys noticed, I was very like, whenever there was something that I know I, I did, all of it in the house, I would like shy away, stay in the back, you know, yeah. type of thing. And like, <laughs> I was. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You're always shy to take so like, your accolades. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm trying to learn to like celebrate. It's one thing I'm trying to cuz I think I was once why don't I celebrate? Like I do. It's just internal. It's a very internal process yeah. for me to put myself on the shoulder. Jumping up and down. Yes, it's a reflex, but I don't have that reflex. Um mm. But let's go, let's go into, um, let's go into Papa Ghost is what I'm doing. Forget about my past. Forget about everything. Right now, I'm focusing on my script writing, my life behind the lens um, of a camera. I am in the process of taking some classes to kind of further, better what I do, you know. Um, but definitely my main focus is going to be on working on maybe a feature film, TV series, and a documentary. But obviously one thing at a time, I don't know which one will come first, but it's definitely going to be behind the lens, on the director's lead, um, on the script writing level. I definitely want to position myself as a storyteller, and I want to kind of take what I do and, like, not only elevate myself, but elevate others around me that seek to, you know, walk that path. I do want us to tell beautiful African stories to Africans, and I want them to, you know, pierce the global markets like how they do with us. You know, whatever comes from Europe or America, it's, it's gold down here. Mm -hmm. So I do kind of want to turn the tables. I want us to have big voices when it comes to stories. And I feel like when you tell stories, Boldness is quite, like, it's quite, it's key to be bold when you're telling a story because Facts, yes. at the end of the day, people live their normal life and they're always looking mm -hmm. for something extra, for something more, for something that's going to pull them out of their reality and give them a sense of wonderment. So I think that's where I'm at. I definitely will be working on a TV show, directing script writing um that's where i'm mm. at right now uh yes i do love music i'm a musician uh but music will always be there for me but right now my main focus is definitely to be you know a writer 
and a director. That's where my focus is. That's where I'm headed into. That's where the opportunities are there for me right now. Yes, Glory, you will be one of the first people to find out when I secure my first job. I definitely will let you know. It's quite Please close, let me know. I'm I'm this close. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Listen, Papa Ghost. Listen, Papa Ghost. I watched you the entire 71 days. I experienced your creativity. I know, I mean, let me not say I know. I, I watched how far you can stretch yourself to produce excellence. And so the one thing I'm really praying for for you is that your work appears on a global stage. Netflix, Showmax, and any other one I don't know. I'm really, see, I've mm. seen productions on these platforms and compared to just the little, little ones that you produced in Big Brother's house, I know that your, yours will be better. So I'm really hoping, you know, that you hit oh, oh, those you so platforms. Because, yeah, because the, the world needs to experience you. It's how you put your heart and soul into the things you create. You are very specific about details, you know, yes. and that's the yes. thing that African creators really need. Paying attention to details. You're very particular about yes. details and excellence. Yes. And I'm really hoping and praying that your your works appear on these major global platforms we need to experience you on those Thank levels so all right so much for that. yeah beautiful yes <laughs> yes okay i want to ask you if uh, there's any you know future plans with lerato um let me not look like i'm actually prying into that <laughs> angle with I mean, hey, but <laughs> um, people are asking. <laughs> Lerato and I, um, Lerato and I were good. Mm. Um, you might have seen we were spotted together out at Cotton Fest and at Willie's homecoming this past weekend. Lerato and I are good, but because we're the mature grown-up people we are, we've realized that our journey as two people that are intimately involved starts from scratch out here again you know yeah and we're kind of navigating that from point zero so you might not be seeing us moving in together like how people would have expected it to be but we are yeah. we are good we are kind of figuring ourselves figuring each other out as well um and who yes. we are out here and also with the new lives that we have you know, we definitely do have new lives and goes without saying that it does um, take its toll on one and the, yes. there has to be adjustments that are made. So, I mean, we're, we're yeah. in no rush for for a little baby ghost yet, but um, <laughs> nice. but, nice. but we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. She's probably watching right now. I assume she is. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Papa Ghost, one one advice I will leave you with with regards to your your relationship, connection, however it is with Lerato is please always be reminded that you do not owe anybody any explanation for your relationships, right? The oh. fact that people the fact that people watched you and experience your relationship from their own lens on live TV, you are under no obligation yeah. now that you both are outside to give people updates about your relationship. Because to be honest, that is one of sure. the things that easily, yeah, it's one of the things that easily disrupts people's relationship or whatever they are trying to build on the outside you know yeah. you do not need you do not need shippers or fans opinion to build anything sure. with lerato you are under no obligation whatsoever you do not need to give people updates go with your own flow both of you should go with your own flow your own vibe however way if the relationship is so sweet and you decide you want to post a picture it's fine if you don't want to post a picture nobody's gonna die 
don't feel obliged yeah. to yeah. feed the curiosity of the online shippers. You do not have to. Awesome. You don't. Yeah, awesome. please. It's, it's, this one is very important. Live your life at your own pace. Enjoy your relationship at your own pace. We'll see you both for 71 days. It's okay. It's time for both of you to figure yeah. whatever you want to figure out by yourselves. You do not need the yeah. opinion 100%. of fans or teachers. Yes, please. You're under no pressure. You're under no obligation. Yeah. Just enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. You've regained your freedom back. <laughs> so do what you want to do with your freedom. <laughs> all right. Don't allow any Absolutely. shippers or people, you know, to rope you back into this big brother Zamzi world of oh, and because you were in a sheep, yeah. you must let people know if you're together. You owe nobody and you don't owe anybody yeah. anything. So just enjoy your life. Okay. Enjoy your life. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank so you so much for that. Right now. So <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that's all the You're questions welcome. you have. I mean, okay, yeah. I have one question for you, Chloe. Oh, you do. Carry on. What was your What was your favorite wager task presentation? <laughs> Don't be okay. biased because I'm on you. So. Okay, okay. I won't be biased. I won't be biased. I really loved the the podcast you did with Sinai. And the reason I loved it is because aside how every other person performed, for the first time, I feel like you really allowed yourself to shine on stage. Because you are always... Ah. Yeah, you're always behind the scenes. You're always the director. You're always the one cooking things up. You are always working behind the scenes. And it felt like we weren't really experiencing the brain behind the task enough, you know? So the fact that that podcast, you were able to shine, this your magnificent voice was able to be heard, that was, that was actually my favorite. You know, everybody was heard. Everybody in the house at the time was heard. And then you, yeah, that yeah. is always working behind the scenes, right. you were on the stage. You were, you, were, you were enjoying your spotlight. So that was my favorite. Okay. Um, I, just, I, I asked you about the, the video I at the moment. Oh, okay. How did, did you hear what I said? How did you feel when you how did you feel when you saw me acting for the first time in week 10? Cuz I played Twenza and um Young Papi. <laughs> Papa goes. <laughs> See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see. It still, it still boils down to what I just said about the podcast you did with Sinai. You are so used to mm. being in the background, and I understand, right? But when you are on stage doing the actual thing, you shine bright, and I love that. And you see, it was so refreshing to see that fun side of you, you know? The person that can yeah. leave the cameras to just roll, and then you are the main character, right? You're the main character on the stage. You know, you're not in the shoes of the star maker now. You are the star that is being made. So that really brought you out. And I really do wish that if, in as much as you love being behind the cameras, that once in a while you step in front of the camera and do something. There's this um, American movie director. I can't remember his name, but... For every of his movie, right, he always takes on the role of maybe the passerby, or he just takes on one simple role. I can't remember his name. I, I think he could that's actually. My, that's my more. favorite director. That's my favorite uh -huh. director, Quentin Tarantino. Exactly. Yes. That's yeah. That's him. That's him. So yeah. I, I think you are a great actor if you let yourself be. 
So you should let yourself be. I, I, I mean, I, if I'm writing the stories, I, I'm definitely going to cast myself. <laughs> you should. <laughs> might, you not be, might be a leading role. It might not be a leading role, but I definitely will put myself through those paces as far as acting goes. Now you should. And another thing I, I really do hope that you would pursue is a podcast. Imagine having a podcast with your brother and your sister. That would be wild. You people have this big mm, energy. Uh, your energies yeah. are so contagious. You people have fun. Your energy is big. Your brother with his own experience from his own field, your sister doing the fitness and modeling and mm. everything she does, and then you bringing your expertise, yeah. and then yeah. doing it. See, it's going to be mad. And I'm sure South Africa is going to love it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, we're, we're, we've been throwing ideas around. Uh, um, you know, but I think the one that people want more than anything is a reality show. But <laughs> I don't know. I'll kind of nice. add my full of reality TV for now. For the, maybe, maybe for another three months. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that, that would be great. I would love to work with the boys. Now, that would be that would be nice. That would be nice. I mean, I'm thinking yeah. about it right now. And then I can... Now, that would be nice. <laughs> And then that I can watch you nice. reviewing us every week and be like, how oh, glory, I thought you were my friend. How can you say these <laughs> things about me? <laughs> now, Papa Ghost, yeah, you know that when it comes to reviews, nobody is my friend. I will say what I see, and that's it. Know, and then after I reviews, know. we can be friends. <laughs> Look, you need, you need your credibility as well, and I appreciate what you do so much. Um, looking back on my journey and how you, you know, documented everything in such a non-biased, in such a, a beautiful and detailed manner, like, I appreciate you so much being on this platform. It really means a lot to me to, you know, grace this platform live with you. Um, you. I hope that in future, there will be more reasons for us to interact. And I hope yes. that Big Brother and the Season 4 Sam Osha is not the end of it. Amen. I, I say him, amen to that. Thank you so much, Papa Ghost. Thank you so much. If you don't mind, you. there's something I do on here, right, when I am having such a conversation um, with fantastic individuals as yourself. Um, if you would allow i would love to bring on maybe two three or four or five persons that would want to interact with you very briefly if you don't mind i don't mind i am running super low though on my battery it's been on for four hours on the stream so mm -hmm. but yes bring them on i i think i think it will hold i think it will hold on so we're done okay Okay, nice. So you have your, um, your supporters on Twitter, and there is Sugar, is it Sugar Mommy? Um, hello, Sugar Mommy. Sugar Mommy, you can unmute. Unmute your mic, and Papa Ghost can hear you. Hi. Hello, hey. Sugar Mommy. Yes, he that can name is just a lot. Hi, <laughs> Good evening. Okay, so Hi, I just have a few things <laughs> and I'll be really brief. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just want to thank you for being so authentic. Oh, yeah. You were authentic in the house. It was beautiful to see. And Glory, thank you for giving him his flowers. He deserves. Also, I want to say thank you for being amazing. Meanwhile, we had to defend every day, even when you were sleeping, breathing, being alive. We we're defending, but that's fine. That, that, that's, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to let you know that we will yeah. always be here. Whatever you choose to do going on, we're going to support you. All five of us will always be here to push, oh support, and you know, Thank you so much. encourage you. I also want to let you know that you were made to be seen and heard, and we heard you loud and clear. No matter what anybody's mm. opinion mm. is about you, we do not care. We genuinely love you. 
as a person, we love your personality, and it's okay to be self-aware and confident. There's nothing wrong with it. That's all I would mm. say. Thank you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. much your, your, you see things like that, <laughs> like your your when people bear themselves and they just speak to you like like that, like like that is so beautiful. Thank you so much for that message. And may God bless you. <laughs> your, Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's speak with Mama Hello. Ghost. I guess that's the name. Mama Ghost. Please unmute your mic and let's hear you. Mama Mama Ghost. Hello, Gloria. Hi. Hello, 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 Mama Ghost. Which Mama Ghost is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Mama Ghost, your connection. Can you come back? Please come back, come back. Anyways, let's speak with African Trey. African Trey, Mama Ghost fell out due to connectivity issues. African Trey, you can unmute your mic and speak, please. Hey, Mary, I'm Papa Ghost. I love Papa Ghost. I am talented. Hi. Yo, Papa Ghost, we love you hello, so hello, much. Hello, hello. Oh, I love you too. Ten times. We don't hear what people oh say about you. We just want to spread love. The, the ghost pops love you so much. Hey, ghost pops. Pops. I love all five of you. Just know that. <laughs> we love you so much. Hey, oh, I don't know how to express how I feel. Uh -huh. hey, thank you so much for bringing Papa thank Ghost. You. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you That's so much. I to Papa Ghost, let's go. You're welcome. We move. <laughs> let's go. <Yeah>. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, African thank Tree. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. So much, All right. Um, wow. <laughs> okay, let's speak with Lemons. Lemons on Twitter. Please unmute your mic. Let's hear you. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. Hi. Uh, good. We are good. How are you? I'm a ghost. <laughs> As a ghost cop, um, you are amazing. We've seen your work on Thursdays, and I just hope that everything works out for you and that, you know, it materializes, it gets you money. Um, also, I wanted to say that while there's still hype around Big Brother, around you, approach brands you know that you want to work with tell them that you come with this many people and 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 we are here for you you know we'll hype it up we'll tell us what you want us to do and we will work with you as your fans and you so much. Pa, to say please don't play my girl please do not play miss robots please don't play the record <laughs> <TV. laughs> I have a question, and my question is, uh -huh. what specific date is this specific night that I'm always thinking about? Because, you know, when I see she pairs pictures with you and the Rato videos, I'd be like, oh, and then I'll think about that one night, you know? So, it was that night, it was a Thursday night, and you invited, or I don't know what happened, I might have missed something, but come on, else ended up in your in your space and stuff. And with that night is always at the back of my mind. Well, why why did that night happen? Was it something that you and Lavato planned? Because you you guys planned a lot of things. Or but uh, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was something that we planned, and I aborted the mission because. I just didn't want to go through it. So I left and I went to go sleep with the rato, as many of you might know. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the question and, and lemons. And Papa goes, thank you for responding. That is calling me from a concerned supporter. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um on yeah. 
for those of you on YouTube, Sorry, please my, go ahead. My phone is going to be dying link. in 30 seconds. Uh, my phone will be off. In, oh my God, in 30 seconds. Yeah. In 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me bring on Lusanda Pretty from YouTube to speak with you before your phone dies. Lusanda, please carry on. Hi, Glory. Hi. Welcome. How are you, Papa Ghost? Papa Ghost, hello. Oh. Lusanda, carry on. Carry on. I, I think he can hear you. His phone is about to die. Okay, um, I just wanna say that um I I really enjoyed your your diary sessions, you know, most of the time, Papa Ghost. I like the way you speak. Well, I have a question. Um would you like to work with Mac Junior maybe in future? Because I think that you guys made a good team, a great team. You know, I know that you uh, maybe you were not getting along. Um, um, Lusanda, oh my God, you his his battery is dead. His phone's oh, battery yeah. is dead. Yeah, okay, but the question you're you. asking. The question yes. you're asking, he already addressed it. He already addressed it when um, I was asking questions about his rivalry with Mac Junior. He, he responded that if the opportunity presents itself, he would definitely work with Mac Junior. So he answered okay. that question. Yeah, he did. Okay. He did. So now he has yeah. disappeared. But, no, he, he, he mentioned that he had only 30 seconds left oh, on his yes, phone and that. on his battery. Yes, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But that's that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lysander. Um, Thank I mean, guys, you. you're welcome. You're welcome. Guys, apologies that Papa Ghost had to drop off. We're being on this live interview conversation for over four hours now. And I just want to really give kudos to him because... It's not easy. I mean, I did not intend to carry on this conversation for so long, but we had so many things to cover. You know, there were there were a lot of things that happened, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of perceptions, negative perceptions that were perfect. And I literally had questions upon questions upon questions upon questions. Over four freaking pages of questions, you know, just to be able to cover all those unpleasantness, right? And that was the reason we we stayed this long. But I want to really appreciate all of you. Now, in the absence of Papa Ghost, um, for the next 10, 15 minutes, I would love to take your feedback, all right? I see that there are still a lot of you that want to speak, all right? So I'm going to quickly take your feedback now. Um, for those of you on YouTube, Go ahead, click the link in the comment section and let's get to it. Um, I'm going to speak with those of you on Twitter. Okay, let's go with um, the ADV. I've spoken with Sugar Mommy and African Tree or African Tea. Let's speak with the ADV. The ADV, are you ready to go? Unmute your mic. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm sad that I'm sad that he left because I wanted to tell him these things. Okay. Number one, I wanted to tell him that I love his voice. <laughs> and just like you, I'm super sexual. Nice. And that's why I got to like him, you mm. know, because of how intelligent he is. Yeah. I wanted to tell him I also like how unapologetic, uh, unapologetically expressive he is, yeah. how extensively diplomatic he is, and just... Everything about him, man, I just I just like it. I didn't even care about what people said about him on the internet. I was ready to defend. I never really cared about housemates like I did for him. Defending, <laughs> having Twitter just to talk about a housemate and just to, you know, hmm. clear all those narratives that they had about him. But, yeah, and I wish him well. For whatever he has to do moving forward. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say to him. But I hope, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This conversation is being recorded. So I I I hope that um when he finds the time that he gets to, you know, listen 
you know, to this part because it's very necessary for him to know that there are people out there that can actually relate with his personality and love and accept him for who he is. So thank you very much to you, ADV. Um, let's speak with Zile. I hope I got that right. Zile, hi. Hi. Uh, first, I'm joining your uh, your your space. So it's it's really nice. I really enjoy it. Thank you. Um, so, what did I want to say? You first of all, I want to give you your flowers. You did a great job with that interview. Thank you. Um, I really loved your questioning. Your questioning. It was very very. I love the way that you did it. Thank you. Um, the way that you were asking him questions was really really nice. I really enjoyed it. it he was really comfortable. Um, when I was answering you for me, I really wanted to tell him that, uh, um, you know, one thing that Ghost and Mirage did for me in that show, they allowed me to look at the game in a more, uh, in a more strategic lens than looking at the game in a superficial way that like, like a lot of viewers, you know, yes. like, um, I got to see the game in a very different view. I got to understand that when you come into the house, it's a social experiment. Yes. And um, when they were, uh, the mental game that they were playing with the housemates was really, really interesting. And I really, it you know, really allowed me to kind of enjoy Big Brother in a very different way for this season. And again, they kept to the banner of the, of the, of the show. They kept to the theme of the show, which was really really amazing they did yes. a great great job and i mean i'm super proud of him and i, I want to echo what uh sugar mama said you know she said something that was very very true there's nothing wrong with being confident and being outspoken yes um no one is taking that uh that chance or shine from you if you're being open if you're being uh, self-aware and being confident yes. it does not dim anybody's light and i feel like sometimes he was done really unfairly yes. because of people who project their insecurities upon him and that and then that was a storyline that was fed to the public yes. but i really hope that he takes nothing negative that has been said or has that is being said or ha has been said about him i hope that he uh, he soars and he does great, and we are here to support him as as for me as a as a shipper <laughs> and also as a ghost no. and also as a robotic crew. So we are here to support them. Whatever project that they have coming up, yeah. we're here to support them and love them and show them love. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Corey. Thank you so much. Thank you so so much. That was really apt. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for acknowledging um my my style of conversation i really appreciate your kind words thank you very much all right let's quickly speak with moja on youtube hello hello moja you have to unmute your mic so that we can hear you moja okay moja you i, I can't unmute okay great hello hi Lori. how are you I'm good. Hi. Hello. Uh, I can't hear you, Moja. Sorry, girl. Hello? Can you go to the next one? I'll be back right after. My my network um, is no pretty bad. And um, there's nobody else to speak right now. I mean, hey guys, if there's anybody else that wants to speak. Um, please click the link in the comment section on YouTube. If you're on Twitter, um, send in your request and I'm going to add you on as a speaker. Okay. If you're on YouTube, you want to share your thoughts, your feedback, um, whatever you garnered from the conversation, click the link in the comment section to speak. All right. Um, if you are on Twitter, please send in your, your request and I'm going to bring you on as a speaker. All right. Hi, Lori. Okay, yes, carry on, please. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. So, I'm sorry, I, I'm running around quite a bit. I don't sorry. want it to say to Papa Ghost, sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath. What I wanted to say to Papa Ghost, um, that hasn't been said already, because like the most amazing things have been said about that man and warranted. They have all been warranted. He's just done an amazing job in promoting himself and kudos to him so yeah 
<sighs> Sorry, still trying to catch my breath. Sorry. Here. Um, <laughs> what Sorry. I actually wanted to know from him, there was a conversation that made its way onto the internet, or rather something that was said by a housemate, Yolanda, that yeah. um, Papa Go said something during their punishment when they were trying to sort rice and beans and stuff about how your father should be rolling in his grave or whatever, something like that. And as far as I can remember, that comment was made by Lerato when they were playing that recharge your battery game when Yolanda could not respond. So mm. I was quite surprised that people are pushing that narrative to say that that's something ghosted. Maybe it was said, I don't know, because I remember that day when they were serving their punishment, I wasn't watching, I ran to gym. But if mm. that's the case, I would have loved for him to clarify um, if he did say that and if he did, what exactly he meant by it. And then, then another thing, um, he gave a whole lot of housemates take-homes during the final show. Yeah. But I wanted him to take home just how, how do I say, you know how we always say that Papa Ghost is always right, which has a strong point. He is always right. But the way he addresses certain situations is a bit, you know, catch 22 sometimes. Um, I heard when he was addressing the Makeka situation earlier on, and I think the issue there was him being able to read the room sometimes. He was upstairs with Z and them, so he didn't realize that Makeka and Liema had sorted out the issues. So when he came downstairs and said to Makeke, why are you attacking Sinaya now? It almost mm. felt like he was reprimanding my cake and with everything mm -hmm. going on in the house people telling my cake that you are being controlled by ghosts and da -da 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 -da, you can almost understand how that's a bit triggering you know mm. also with the current mm. situations like don't reprimand a bunch of people so i would love for him to take that home from the experience in the house to say that even though i have a good point to put across but sometimes i can't be condescending in you know, putting out a message. But that's all okay. I say. We love all the right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, in the absence of Papa Ghost, I want to speak to the first one you mentioned. Um, the other one is a take home for him. Um, the, the first one about um, Narata saying your um, Yolanda's father will be rolling in the grave, blah, blah, blah. I actually watched that, um, that's, that game they were playing you know the charging your battery game and whatever was said that night it was not intended to be malicious that conversation was housemates sharing one positive thing and one negative thing that they have perceived about their fellow housemates and a lot was said about, you know, from housemates to housemates that were gathered in the lounge at that point in time. So it was more like a feedback, just like we're doing right now, right? It's like, you've watched me for a while and I'm asking you, please, what, what do you psychoanalyze me? I literally played this game with my friend some nights ago. We were just having a conversation. I told him, okay, look at me, psychoanalyze me. What do you think about me as a person? Because it's easy for people to look at you all the time and tell you how good and awesome you are or how terrible you are. Sometimes you just want them to just psychoanalyze you and tell you the good and the bad and the ugly, you know? So that was what they were doing. So when Lerato was giving her feedback to Yolanda, it wasn't maliciously. It wasn't like you're a terrible person. Your father should be ashamed of you. No. If I can remember correctly, and this is not me trying to quote Lerato verbatim, Lerato was basically giving Yolanda feedback about her personality in the house and why people do not necessarily agree with the many things she does. And one of the things that Lerato talked about was how Yolanda spoke to the guys in the house. And she gave a very valid example, which I agree with. You, um, Lerato had explained that you were raised by a man. In this house, you always talk about your father, about how much he taught you, about how much he impacted in your life. But look at the way you speak to the guys in the house. You are rude, you are disrespectful to them. As a matter of fact, because of how you treat the men in the house, having been raised by a man, your father could be rolling in the grave just to even see you the way you are behaving right now. 
And I think that that's valid because it's like a man that is raised by a woman. You always speak about how beautiful your childhood was or your experience was and then you find yourself in an environment where there are women and then you treat those women like they are shit anybody can make that statement and it's like a call for action for you to sit down have a moment of introspection and remember where you're coming from remember who raised you remember that this one person that you always talk about in the house as your pillar of knowledge of respect this person is a figure in your life and a representation of the men around you. So even though you are in this house and you're doing whatever you're doing, how do you think your father would have, you know, taken what you're doing to the men in the house? So it wasn't intended to be malicious. It was a feedback. Yolanda equally gave her own feedback. And for those people that watched that episode that day, when... Papa Ghost was giving her feedback to Lerato. Yolanda was literally attacking Papa Ghost. And Papa Ghost did not turn back and say, I want to attack you. Shut the fuck up. Da, 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 da. He did not do that. All right. But I'm just saying that it was a moment of feedback, an exchange of feedback between the housemates that were there. Here's the reason I asked Papa Ghost or even mentioned about Sinai, who initially said he never wanted to be a part of that game. But then when he sat down and understood that, oh, wow, people are actually giving necessary feedback to housemates, he decided to join the game. And after the game, the guy was giving testimonies about how he was glad that he had been part of that game because he needed to hear the things that were said about him. So it wasn't intended to be malicious. For the other one that you mentioned, I'm really hoping that Papa Ghost listens to this part of this conversation. And here's what you had to say to him. All right. I hope I answered that properly and to your satisfaction. Okay. Let's speak with um, Lillian and Darren. Lillian on YouTube, you go first. You're welcome. Hey, I need to speak. Cool. <laughs> Hello, Lillian. Life. Hi, Lillian. You're welcome. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Okay, Lillian, you have to be audible and more energetic, all right? Hi, hi, hi. Am I energetic enough? <laughs> they are not energetic enough. The energy here is very high. <laughs> how are you? Whoa. I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm great. Um, You're welcome. Just thank, you. thank you so much. Sorry? Um, Thank you so much for hosting Papa Ghost. Yeah. Oh, for okay. all um, for all the kindness and the love, I'm just here to shout a shout out to him for thanking him for sharing his knowledge with us. Some of us were pleased that we've been fans of Big Brother, but it was too much of the same thing, like same thing, predictable game and everything. So him, uh, it was a like a breath of fresh air to have him on the show, sharing his knowledge and everything that he shared with us. Yeah. So we, we pray that the Lord will make everything perfect for him. Yeah, yeah, that's all I had to say. And thank you so much for listening in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lillian. You are, you are highly appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, let's speak with the final speaker for tonight. Darren, Darren, before you say anything, before you say anything, Darren, I just want to, first of all, thank you for being here for the longest time. Um, Darren, even when we had our connectivity issue for almost 30 minutes, you were patient, you were here on the back end. I could see you and I could see all the love and support and encouragement you kept on sending. I just want to say thank you very much. I saw all of that and I accepted it. I held on to it and I'm oh. grateful. You're welcome. <laughs> but I want to say no, because honestly, Papa Ghost has been my, um, you know, one of my favorite housemates, housemates in the house. So definitely, yeah. I'm going to send, you know, a lot of love and all of that, you know, encouragement, who he is as a person, his personality, etc., etc. So definitely, it's not a problem, Gloria. You're, you're, you're more than welcome, absolutely. So... <laughs> I've been I've been there for I think I've been I, I came earlier I've been on time um I know the yeah. connection issue and all of that I do understand that things happen like that 
Um, yeah. like the one you did with doing, I think we're having an issue with doing um last yeah. time, you know. I, I do understand as well. And doing was one of my favorite as well in the house. Yeah. So um, so it, it's not a problem, but let's get back into the business of the day. So I've been on space like for I think two hours. I just said, let me go and drink some water and cool my brain, honestly. <laughs> You're welcome back. <laughs> I think we can drink some water and come and bring glow because yes. the, the, the kind of ah, I said this piece is not gonna end. I was just like you and um Papa Ghost were just talking and talking. But anyway, um overall, maybe just brief summarize everything. So according to what I understand when you're interviewing Papa Ghost and what he was saying, it was hundred percent true. And this one thing I love about this guy is that he's he's very, very honest. And he, he, you know, he doesn't mind who is listening or who is not listening. Um, yeah. Um, the, let me go back. Let me, let me go with the issue with um, Yolanda, Papa Gus and Yolanda in the house. I think it's one of the mm. this one of the issues that actually really, really bring. I don't know that actually gave me um a lot of emotions as a mm. as, as a fan. Like uh, mm. I don't. Especially the um, to the fact that when Yolanda always come to her bed, to his Papa Goose bed, you know, trying to force sleep in there, you know, throwing uh what what is it called? I don't know what was to throwing other sugar or whatsoever. I don't know. Mm. And the way he was was approaching Ghost and speaking to Papa Ghost, he was absolutely out of order. I don't really like it. Yes, she was playing her game, she was trying to, you know, use strategy or whatsoever. But me personally, I was not comfortable with it in that particular situation mm. as a fan. And the person that's super goes as well. And I love him because he was very, very patient. And the way he held it and handled it was absolutely incredible. Papa goes. I gave him a critic a hundred percent on that. Because if it was other if it was um any other um um person, you know, he couldn't he or she, he or she couldn't take it like that and they couldn't handle it anymore like that. But it was actually a very, very big credit to him for him to be patient, to head out, even when um Yolanda was speaking to him, oh, bring your box, hey, you're so old, hey, this and that, he's here in the rich man, hey, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I said to myself that, oh, this girl, it doesn't matter from the rich background or not rich background. How do you know that Papa Ghost is even rich? He does start speaking on, on his head, even when he was sweeping, even when he was cleaning the floor, even when he was, um uh, uh we were having a misunderstanding through Papa Ghost, um, uh, uh, a sh- sugar on his bed, trying to sleep on his bed for it. He had that disqualification, and him, the papa goes even take accountability and understood um Yolanda's pains. You know what actually happened. Mm-hmm. So you see where I'm coming from. So it was actually, I, I really felt for for the Yolanda as well. You know, emotionally, but what mm-hmm. she did was actually right and. Only her voice even. Oh, because he must. She talks until she doesn't even have space to even breathe. She just keep on talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. I just said to myself that this girl did you drink a two two bottle of um of liquid or energy drink? She doesn't stop. Like I'm like oh god, if I'm in that house, I don't know how I'm gonna cope. <laughs> but let me tell you something, Darren. Let me tell you something, Darren. Yeah. Let me tell you something, yes. Darren. I, um, about the sugar, just to um, just to set the record straight, right? About that sugar situation. Um, remember that week was, I think, fear week or scare week. That's um, yes, face your fears. Yes. Face your fears. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Face your fears. Yeah. So Papa Ghost and Sinai, they were already playing pranks. If I'm not just both of them. Everybody in the house was playing pranks with everybody. Housemates knew at that point already that Makeke especially was afraid of snakes. And that was when they planted the rubber snake in the fridge that scared Makeke. That was when Papa Ghost was in the kitchen and the person that came with the live, no, um, the ninja put on a scary mask and scared him. People were scaring people in the house. So it was allowed. Yes. And then Sinai the and Makeke. Week. Yeah, it was a scary week for the housemate. It was the theme of the week, face of fears. And Sinaye and uh, what's his name, Papa Ghost, they had sprinkled, was it um, sugar? Yeah, sugar on Yolanda's bed. So she was playing the game of retaliation. And, you know, it was like tit for tat all around the house, right? So Yolanda put yeah. in sugar on Papa Ghost's bed. The only, um, should I say, error there was she actually thought it was Papa Ghost and 
Lerato, she did not think Sinaye was actually involved in that whole equation, all right? So I just thought I should yes. clarify the pair there, yeah. Okay. And again, uh, Papa Goose was really, really strong in the house because I felt like that situation, even before that sugar thing, you know, from the beginning of the show, I don't know, Yolanda and Papa Goose were having an argument. I don't know what the argument was all about. And um, Yolanda was speaking to his face that, oh, when, when Papa Goose was cleaning the floor, eh, you are not, you, eh, eh, bring up, bring up, look and bring your luggage. You're a rich man. You're not supposed to be in the show, etc., etc., etc. I don't know which week was that. Then, eh, uh, eh, uh, Yolanda, Yolanda keep on coming to his face. He said, oh, please, yeah. let's speak in private, my private space, please. I'm going to hit you now, let's speak in private space. He was just ignoring Yolanda. She was, he was, Papa Goose was also talking back. Yolanda was also adding her voice more and more and more. So I felt like in that situation, the way Papa Goose handled it was absolutely incredible, honestly. Okay. Because if it was, if, if it was any other man that was, that was in Papa Goose's position, I don't think they can handle it. And I don't think they can go through that noise. If in, in, mm. in your ears, you can imagine mm. yeah. it was a credit for yeah. him for that. I'm a really, really loved it, yeah. yeah. So, and um, again, I was not happy with Lorato. Um, Yolanda also speaking to Lorato when Mitch was there, Makeke was on the bed. I can't remember that clip, I think it was one clip like that that I can I'm trying to kind of like think of. Mm -hmm. So, and the housemates were downstairs. Most of the housemates, like Bumi, uh, Snai, they were, they, I think they were downstairs when um, all this was happening. So, uh, 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 um, um, what is it called? L I think, L um, so Lorato went upstairs, went upstairs and, um, I don't know, she just went and sat down on, on the bed. Then uh, Yolanda, was, Yolanda was saying that, oh, what are you doing? Um, um, you could have, if not of course, you could have gone home. Hey, what are you doing here? Etc. 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 Can yeah. you remember that, that clip? I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you, you, you see, uh, Darren, let me tell you something, Darren. You see, uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. Um, I personally try not to, you know, dwell on many things that happened in the house, right? And that is why when I have conversations with these housemates, right, I try to stay on the path of their personal experience in the house. And if those experiences are connected to certain housemates, those are the experiences I focus on. Do you understand me? The yes. one between the one between Yolanda and Lerato, when I spoke with Lerato, I actually addressed all of that. If you listen to the interview, you will hear, and there's no bad blood from Lerato towards Yolanda, right? I, I haven't spoken with Yolanda, so I don't know if the sentiments are the same, you know, from her towards Lerato. But what I'm trying to say in essence is, I understand how it feels when you like a housemate and you relate with the housemate's personality and then you see other housemates being sort of be, yeah they, they, yeah so not that, that very housemate then they, 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 they then they are um then they, they, they lay back now and they start looking as if the housemate is a bad is a bad housemate yeah. or is he or she is doing something wrong yeah yeah i so understand I don't feel so, like in the house i felt like papa goes not really people people do not really i don't know like see him as if he doesn't exist in that house, but he was doing his very, very best. You know, someone trying mm. to say, in terms of situation, look at Makeke and uh, Papa Ghost. Hey, you know, we're two million. We are in this house. Hey, do, do, do. Even before they um, invicted um, Lorato, that they take eviction, Lorato Medici and Papa Ghost to the, you know, um, the other house. Mm -hmm. um, when they came back, I think Makeke and Papa Ghost were very, very close. So it's like Makeke now, prepare himself, you know, to try to use, to try to play his game through Papa Goals and start, you know, mm. uh, monitoring him, you know, yeah. start being against him, etc., etc., etc. As all yeah, know. Valid. Valid. So, but if I, you know what, you know what the good thing is now? The good thing is we've spent over four hours listening to Papa Goals' side of his journey in the house, right? And my biggest joy is all of those misconceptions that people had about him in the house. He has cleared the air about them and he has set the record straight. If anybody after now has 
if anybody after listening to this, sorry. If sorry, anybody, was my bear. Okay. If anybody listens to this long hours of conversation and still has their doubts about Papa Hello. Ghost as as an individual, I don't know what else to do. All right. So I yes. think we should just we should just leave it at that. All right. We should just leave it at that. The game is over. Uh, we've cleared the air. So let 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 it be like that. All right. Continue yeah. All of um, this, please. <laughs> but anyway, it has been Gloria. It has actually been an incredible four hours, three hours. I'm like, hey, you're not rest. You know, having drinking, um, um, having a break. I'm like, oh my goodness, I my can't believe I saw you online here, Papa Ghost. I'm like, oh <laughs> my goodness. So anyway, a very very big well done to you, honestly, because I don't think me myself I could have started like this. You know, have a life, a life, a life. Um, you know, with Papa Ghost for two to three hours. It was actually a lot, but I'm really really happy that. Um, Papa Goose opened up to you. He spoke his mind. He spoke his heart out. What happened in the house? He was being. He was yeah. very genuine. He was very. He was very honest to you as yeah. well. And my head most of the conversation. I just not go back there because I know I've spoken about that. Papa Goose yeah. again. He might have had the conversation on that. But overall, in, in life, it's just all about you know respecting each and everyone, understanding them, no matter what. Yes, it's a game. It's a game. Each and everyone went there with different strategy. strategy different mindsets, yes. you know, different backgrounds, personalities, etc., etc. So all yeah. in all, it's all about those understanding each other and respecting each other and those playing the game. Yes. So that's what I, that's what I feel. That's what I feel is, yeah. you know, is the overall point, you know, because uh, you don't know tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, I'm Darren. so happy that Thank you had you so this interview. Much. I'm yes. so happy that you had this interview with Papa Ghost. Honestly, I'm very, very, very extremely I am happy. happy. I did too. <laughs> I'm happy ah, I did my goodness. Too yes, this I'm is very happy. Papa Ghost is one of my favorite too. I like him. I like him <laughs> as a fan. I don't only like him. I like him as a brother. He's very smart, very humble, very intelligent. He is very, very um um. He has a kind. He's very, very kind-hearted. You know, but if you show him. He doesn't like trouble. If you come beside, if you don't, if you don't provoke him, you he, he will, you know, he will not provoke you. That's the way he is. So, All right. so overall, thank you very, very much, Gloria. I think it's it has been an more. incredible time with you, with Papa thank Ghost. You. Send a lot, all my love to Papa Ghost, to Lorato, yeah. to everyone that has been on the space. Um, thank you guys yeah. very, very much for your time, for your sacrifice. This is a weekly day. Today is Tuesday, but you guys all came. And we all spoke mm -hmm. about um, Papa Ghost, you know, and he, he also attended the stream. I know from the beginning there was network issues and all of that, you know, connecting issues and all of that, but we still made it to the thank end. Um, and Gloria, thank you very, very, very much. Um, thank you for appreciating me, my patience as well. <laughs> well you know, I really, really do appreciate that. So, thank um, you. Thank you for picking that out and seeing that out. I really do appreciate and um, God bless everyone and love you all and see you next next bye. live stream. Yeah, bye bye, bye, bye guys. Thank yeah, bye. So much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Darren. Oh my God, people like Darren, people like Darren are so sweet and hard to find in a community like this. Darren, I'm so I'm so proud and. I feel blessed to have people like you in this community. Guys, thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. I don't even know how to thank you all enough. I mean, this is this is huge. Look at the numbers. We're, we're a lot here. We're a lot here. And it means that for every single one of you that joins today's conversation with Papa Ghost, you are all seekers of truth. You all want to know the truth. You all want to get the facts for yourself, you know, first-hand information. And guys i am i am grateful thank you all so much for coming out in mass for joining this conversation the first 30 minutes of this conversation we had connectivity issues but you all still stayed to the end what can i say god bless you all thank you all so much i was so scared i was literally at my wit's end because i thought oh my god this connectivity issue it's is it going to just end this interview today but look i told you all that's gonna be a great day <laughs> and it turned out to be a great conversation so thank you all so much i am grateful now i'm seeing um, questions about certain things that happened in the house with papa ghost and this housemate and that housemate and i just want to plead all right because there's no time anymore to answer questions um 
I there were so many questions I asked Papa Ghost. We covered so many aspects of his life in the house. So if you have time, hmm, if you have time, it, it's probably not going to be tonight. But if you have time, please take out time and re rewind and listen to this conversation. Trust me, I promise you, it will be worth your time. All right. Just rewind so that by yourself, you will hear from his mouth. All right. You will hear from the horse's mouth any question that you have because he was very forthcoming with his answers. All the questions I asked Papa Ghost, he answered all of them. He did not deny or ignore or reject any question. He answered everything I asked him, which I am grateful for. So if you have questions, trust me, I tried as much as possible not to leave any stones unturned in this interview. So go ahead, rewind and listen, all right? But in the meantime, this is what we're going to call it a night um, for today's episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Um, once again, thank you all so much for your time. Um, guys, do, do enjoy the rest of your evening. Just uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Have an amazing night's rest. Peace out. Peace out to you too, Darren. I see you in the back end. Peace out. <laughs> Peace out to all of you. Once again, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. As usual, we are going to be meeting again on Saturday, 3 p.m. WAT. So please make it a date with us. Do not miss out. Saturday, 3 p.m. WAT. All set. Enjoy the rest of your evening and have a good night. Bye. <laughs>